give Glenn the lead. Don't forget, Harrison still has, well, essentially three cracks to score a touchdown. Boy, oh boy. Well, this is a big play because he's got to make it. It does put pressure on Harrison. All right, yeah, it does. Big, big pressure. Muir, snap is down. Everything's clean. It's blocked. blocked. Can they return this? I don't know. Guess not. I don't think so. So if Harrison scores, well, there you go. They win the football game. Here, stop him. Second down and goal from the six. Any kind of score, and Harrison wins the football game. We're in overtime. Pesci under center, full house backfield, handoff. Bumble. Bumble's a ball, I believe. Well, well, they the are field. digging got in it. there. They're Glenn's really pulling. They got it. Glenn oh, the boy. Oh, oh, my goodness. Glenn. Nothing else matters but these overtimes now. Third and seven. Pesci. He's going to go back to throw. He's got all kinds I of time. Oh, he's oh boy. Wide open. Wide open across the field was Nick Williams. Extra point is solid. We're in the second overtime. If you just joined us, uh, borrow a tape from a friend because you're going to have to rewatch the whole thing to get the pure adrenaline flow of this one. Triple set in the backfield. Hewer's back there, too. Morrison back. Has time. Fire fit! Fit touchdown. Touchdown, Mike Fitz! Well, well now. On the first play. Keep, what do you do? We need an extra point. they got to go for the extra point. If they go for two, this is the ball game. If Glenn gets it, they win. If Harrison stops them, they win. Pitch to Besco! No. No way. no way. That's the ball game. Harrison wins the football game. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Wayne Memorial High School. And boy, what a game that was last week, first of all. But tonight we have another big game. It's the Crosstown Rivals, the Wayne Memorial Zebras, and the John Glenn Rockets. And this is a must game for the Rockets, Michael, if they at all want to have. Well, first let me tell you, Mike did show up for our little free game show today. And Ed Contos is here as well. And Michael, this is a big game for the Rockets. It's a big game for the Zebras, being it's a Crosstown thing, but a huge game for the Rockets. They want to stay number one in Region 2 here. Yeah, Keith, we talked about, you know, throwing out the records, and, and this is a, obviously a city rivalry here. Most of the kids have played against each other in junior high and everything. Everybody out there knows that stuff. You know, you said Glenn has to do it tonight, and they, they really do. They may get in if they lose, but you don't want to get into the state playoffs on a losing note. This is a big game for them. They want to win. They want to go into the state playoffs looking good feeling good. You're absolutely correct. We'll talk about the state playoff ramifications in a moment, but we opened with the Harrison highlights, and Ed, there's really nothing to be ashamed of for the Rockets to lose to a great team like Farmington Hills Harrison. John Harrington's 200th win. We talked at length about that during the game, but Harrison and Glenn did split during the season. Those teams, two teams are very closely matched, and I just thank God we don't have to play the Hawks anymore. That's true, and the other thing to watch out for for John Glenn, I think it's going to be real important that they score early. They're averaging 29 points a game, but in their last two games, they've only scored 20 points, and of course, they needed double overtime to score last week. So if they can get on the board early, I think it's going to help them because Wayne doesn't have anything to lose. It's a crosstown game. It's a real big game for both schools. I think it's very important that John Glenn score early. And of course, of course, we expect the Rockets to come out really sharp today. I don't think the kids are really hanging their heads too much about it. This is a well-coached football team, Michael, and I really don't expect anything less of them than to come out and forget about it totally and play hard tonight. I agree with you totally. And uh, also from the Wayne side, since I do live in Wayne, I've got to make sure these people know that. You know, Wayne High just came off a tough loss, losing to Fortson 7 nothing, And Fortson is, uh, you know, as you know, undefeated in the Mega Conference. So this is a tough Wayne team that Glenn's got to play. So I look for a good, hard-hitting game, and hopefully we won't have any problems. Remember, Glenn has to avenge last year's loss. It was a big, or not a big upset, but an upset last year, we thought. No doubt about it. Nothing to detract from Wayne. Of course, uh, we promise you Westland people that do live in Wayne, we're going to do a couple of Wayne sporting events for you next year. Uh, we were down at the John Glenn practice this week. We talked to Coach Gordon and Matt Houghton, one of the running backs from John Glenn, about the Harrison game and about what they're expecting against Wayne Memorial tonight. Let's take a look at it. How hard was it to get over the Harrison game and get ready mentally for the Wayne game? Well, Saturday morning we were all down. Uh, players were down. Coaches were down. Uh, that was a very tough loss. But uh, by the time we uh, 
got to practice Monday, things were much better. We have excellent senior leadership. They've uh, given us uh, great effort all week. Uh, and the approach we've taken is we're moving on. And uh, can't dwell on that thing as easy as that would be to do. And uh, uh, we've had an excellent week of preparation. And, and I'm proud of the guys the way we're, we've all bounced back, done a nice job with it. The Glen Wayne game is so special because it's a rivalry of the of the two of the city, and uh, we know we know most. I'm on, I know most of the players, and plus my dad is coaching over there, so I'm I'm everyone's so jacked up for this game. I know it's it's one of the biggest rivalries ever. It's a huge rivalry. Um, it's a cross town thing. Uh, this is Michigan, Michigan State. It's uh, Texas, Oklahoma. This is our big game. Uh, the players know one another. The coaches know one another. Uh, we will not have any trouble getting up for this game. Uh, they won't have any trouble either. It's a big game for us, and we're looking forward to it. What's it like playing against your father? Do you think about it at all, or is it just something that's uh, another game for you, or is there something extra special about this? Well, I think it's a, another game for me until, until the end. And then, and then it changes. You know, if he wins, you know, that's good for him. If I win, that's good for me. Like last year, he won, and I was happy for him because he got to go in the playoffs. But I was also disappointed that we couldn't go. Well, and as we heard Coach Chuck Gordon say, he said that with the senior leadership that his team has and the great practice team that they are, we talked to Michael about it for a second. Expect nothing less than the Rockets to perform well tonight. Uh, no question about it. And uh, John Glenn is number one in their region. That's where they want to finish. It's very important, I think, number one, to get momentum going into the playoffs, and number two, to be number one. So at least they may have two home games in the first two games. We see the Rockets going in at halftime. And, uh, Let's take a look at the computer rankings right now, and we'll, we'll tell you the importance of this football game. Right now, John Glenn coming in in Region 2, num seated number one. So if they can win this football game tonight, they will finish first in Region 2, and they will host their first two playoff games if they can win. So an importance right there to have home playoff games. Well, most definitely, Keith. Uh, if you're on your home field, you've got a team that's coming down from uh, you know, possibly Adrian or Brighton or someplace like that. you got a long bus ride. They're going to come to your place. Kids are going to get a good night's sleep here in Westland. And it's their home field. So that's, that's a definite home field advantage for them. There's no doubt about it. You have a lot of people that probably would attend the game that normally wouldn't. Let's talk a little bit about uh, if Glenn happens to lose, Ed. Um, I did read in the Observer. I, I tried to get a hold of Mick McCabe today at the Free Press. I was unsuccessful. But according to the Observer, if Glenn does happen to lose the game, they're still guaranteed to make the playoffs, although they wouldn't have any home games. Right. And, and the problem is, and they started off the year 7-0. and If they lose, then you're going into the playoffs with two losses. And that's why I think it's going to be real important that you go into the playoffs with momentum because the very best team doesn't necessarily always win. But if you can go in with a lot of momentum, you have a good chance. If you look at a team like Belleville that's currently number four in John Glenn's region, they started off with an early loss in the year, but they have a lot of momentum going right now, and they're going to be a key team to watch. There's no doubt about it, Michael. You said that also. It's very important to end the season on a winning note. You tend to start second-guessing yourself when you go into the end of the season with two straight losses in the playoffs. And as you look down Glenn's region, not to snuff any of these teams out, but certainly I would think, looking at the records and what I know about a lot of the teams, Glenn's is in one of the easier regions in the state as far as regions go. You look at Utica, Eisenhower, and Troy and some of those Flint schools, and Eisenhower's been no ranked number one all year, and they've done nothing but blow teams out. So this is a real good chance for Glenn to make it out of their region. Now, I, I agree with you there, Keith. The one thing that Ed talked about, though, that I do agree with Ed, is that Belleville is on a roll. They, they really put it to this Wayne High team, so this is going to be a good measuring stick for John Glenn tonight. Playing against Wayne, they can kind of measure you know, how they did tonight and how Belleville did against Wayne. So look for that to happen. And uh, you know, really, Keith, one of the things you haven't talked about is tonight the John Glenn line has to, has to be active. Their offensive line has got to blow these guys out, or else they're not going to. They're not going to win this ball game, and they didn't do it the last two weeks, really. Especially last week, they really got outplayed on the line, and that's going to be a key tonight. There's no doubt about it. This is a big game for the Westland John Glenn Rockets, and of course, it's just as big for the Zebras as far as the crosstown rivalry. We're going to see what's going to happen coming up right after this. The Rockets and the Zebras here on Continental 11. We'll be back for the kickoff right after this. <laughs>
Hi, this is Chris Edmonds from WNIC inviting you to join me and many other celebrity guests at the 4th Annual Michigan Humane Society Tail Waggers Bowl coming up Saturday, November 13th at both the Bronco Lanes in Warren and the Woodland Lanes in Livonia. There's going to be two squads, 10 a.m. and 2 p.m., luncheons courtesy of Burton Manor in Livonia, a raffle drawing for a four-day Royal Caribbean cruise and grand prize a trip for two to Toronto. So join us and help raise money to support the many operations of the Michigan Humane Society's Cruelty Investigation and Rescue Division. Help us to help our furry friends. Welcome back to Wayne Memorial High School, and Keith Burnick along with Mike Bruis, and Ed Contos has the uh, gingerly job, if I can oh say that, of being down that. on the tundra down there. It is certainly a cold one tonight, unlike last week, which was a perfect night for football. I imagine for the players, Michael, as we take a look at the Wayne team, it is a perfect night for football. I'd like to welcome you again for, to Wayne Memorial High School, the Rockets and the Zebras. I, I, You're cold, you know, Phil. <laughs> I'm sitting here. I'm freezing. I took off my gloves. I was going to give him to Ed, but he's got that nice continental cable jacket that uh, you, know, you and I are trying to get one yeah, of those. we got to put in enough hours. <laughs> we're, sh we're shy. We're yeah, shy we're, a little bit of hours. Since we're up here in the booth, they're not going to give us one, but... It, you're right, Keith. This is a good night for football for the players because uh, even last week we saw uh, Derek Vesco come out of the game with a cramp due to the, probably due to playing a lot and a little bit of heat. Uh, they tonight is, it, a, is a real good night. The only problem really is the wind, Keith. And uh, Wayne High's got a pretty good passing game. And there he is right there, Lorenzo Guess. From what I understand, he's uh, quite a freshman quarterback since Well, I'll here. tell you something. If you can start a, a freshman at quarterback, you hate to uh, see what this kid's going to be like in a couple of years. There you take a look at the Glenn Bench and the other quarterback for the game, Brian Morrison. And uh, you're going to have to keep me in line here, of course, because everybody knows you. Uh, you're a celebrity here at Wayne Memorial High School, you know. So yeah. you're going to have to keep me in line, Mike, sometime to tonight. Me. And we're happy to be here at Wayne High. And uh, rumor has it we're going to be doing a couple games next year for all you Westland residents who have children and uh, kids that go to Wayne High. So we're happy to be here. This is my first game ever here. And we're ready to get underway. The Rockets and the Zebras, it'll be... Matt Houghton who fumbles the ball at the 17. He takes it to the far side of the field. And Houghton's going to lose about four or five yards. So not a great start for the Rockets right off the bat. We'll see who starts a tailback, Mike. It could be one of about many people, but yeah, go ahead. Sure could. I was going to say that was uh, good coverage by Way Memorial. But uh, we gotta, we're got we going to listen to an introduction here, Coach Gordon. Chief, let's go to that right now. Uh, what do you think the keys to victory are? Well, in this game, uh, they played excellent defense a week ago against Fordson. Uh, so that concerns you that uh, they're good up front. Bush is an excellent tailback. The um, quarterback is a young guy. Uh, Lorenzo's just uh, a freshman, but he's not playing like a freshman. He's very talented, and uh, we, we've got to do a good job there. We're back here at uh, Wayne High. He just missed one play. It was Tark Horn with a handoff. He picked up four yards. And so give Horn four yards. And Coach Gordon, you know, he, he prepares. He's like the, the Lou Holtz of uh, high school football, isn't he? <laughs> Every team is the best team they're going to face. Uh, you have, you have, to, be, you have yeah, to be really that is. way. You really do. We're just kidding around. It's Horn in the backfield over to this side. Boy, the Rockets are... Starting a few different people than last game, but it's Jason Fuller out in front of the fullback. Handoff again goes to Horn. Horn's trying to turn the corner. Wayne strings it out pretty well, but a great effort by Tark Horn. And he's going to pick up about seven, and that'll be enough for the Rocket first down. Yeah, we haven't seen, we didn't see much of Tark Horn uh, last week, Keith. Not at all. And you know, he's got the speed. We've seen his speed before. Uh, you know, that was a great individual run there. Wayne missed a couple of tackles. And if they're going to stay in this ball game, they're going to have to make those tackles. They're going to have to make some big plays here. And uh, really, conversely, look at John Glenn. They're going to probably make some big plays. They've got to do that also because they don't want to keep Wayne High in this ball game. They want to get up early, like Ed said in the pregame, and go from there. It's Horn and Fuller in the backfield. Out to the far side is Henry. First down and 10 for the Rockets. They got the ball at the 26. Just underway here at Wayne Memorial. Horn takes the pitch. And a big run for Tark Horn up over the 35 to about the 37. And it'll be another John Glenn first down. Well, Keith, you know, uh, Coach Gordon talked about the practice team. This is a great practice team. You wonder if uh, Tark Horn uh, came out really hot and heavy in practice this week. And 
you know, all he, watch this replay here. See, just great individual effort here. This is the best we've seen him run all season, really. Yeah, really, there wasn't, there wasn't uh, much blocking to be had. A great effort by Horn. It's still Fuller and Horn in the backfield. We're under 10 minutes to go here in the first quarter. No score here at Wayne High. Horn again, straight through the middle, and another gain of about 11. It'll be another rocket first down out to the 49. And Horn already with 32 yards on four carries. Keith, I talked about the uh, offensive line for John Glenn. Didn't really get the job done last week, but tonight they are really blowing them off the line here. And that's that's the big difference. The coaches all talk about that, and tonight that is going to be a big difference. Well, you this said continues it. to happen. You said Look at the pregame show, too, that if Glenn's offensive line can play well, they're going to do well. Best go out to the far side. Over this side's Henry. That's Brian coming in motion. The pitch again goes to Horn. He's got Fuller and Vesco in front of him. And uh, Horn's going to pick up about seven. Good job by number 52, Derek Bode, in on the stop. Well, Glenn is definitely going to the well early. They're, they're, they've run that right sweep uh, about yeah, three or four times. You wouldn't here. go for that. <laughs> no, I wouldn't do that. You know, it's interesting because we've seen this before with John Glenn. They do like to run to the short side of the field. And, uh, you know, they're, they're right in front of us here on, looks like about the 42, 43-yard line. You just wonder when they might pop a deep pass over to Vesco. 8.50 to go. Right now it's been all Tark Horn. He's had five carries, and he's had, the Rockets it's have six. had five plays, and six for six. And Horn this time will be lucky to get a yard. It'll be third down and a long two. Uh, Corey McClellan, the inside linebacker there for uh, the Zebras, came up and made the stop. If you're Chuck Houghton, you've got to be a little bit worried. You've got you to get your linebackers a little bit more active and stop getting them blown off the ball here. Step up and make that tackle. Going up for you. So third down and two. This will be the first third down play of the ball game. He just joined us. We played four minutes into the first quarter. This is the Rockets' opening drive. They've reached the Wayne 42. Third down and two. Hand off to Horn off the right side, and he's going to reach the 40 on his feet. Turk Horn's going to be gone. What a great second and third effort. It's a touchdown. 41 yards for Turk Horn, and the Rockets are on the scoreboard. That, that was really something there because you, I could have swore he was stopped not once but twice and then well, all of a sudden he took off. I, you know, in my professional stats that I keep, I was marking a two-yard gain and saying <laughs> it was enough for a first down. And I looked up and he was still on his feet. Well, you should tell us what Tark Horn has now. I mean, that's, uh, what, that's at least an 80-yard drive. Well, yeah, he carried the ball every time and I every know Glenn started from inside of their 20, so he has at least 80 yards. Not bad with uh, a couple minutes gone in the first quarter here. We're going to take a look at the run right after the extra point here. Fake. They're faking it, and they're going for two, and it's going to be picked off. So, Glenn, I watched, I watched them kick the extra points in practice before the game, and they were succeeding at about a 50% clip. So maybe that's what they why they did it. Let's take a look at Horn again here. Oh, what an effort. Well, they just hit him, and he, he didn't go down, obviously, and kept his feet. Well, Coach Gordon Great always run. says, Mike, he goes with the hot tailback. I think uh, he found one. I think he found <laughs> one tonight for sure. Car Corn with the fabulous run. Yo, know, Keith, uh, we talked a little bit in the pregame about the extra point last week that uh, Glenn failed to score. And you wonder if, uh, you know, if they have a, a serious problem with their kicking game. You said you saw them in the pregame kicking it through the uprights. But, but uh, like it was almost I, I just wonder if that was just uh, if that was planned, if that's what they were going to do, try to get up early. Uh, hard to figure. I think they just kick it and, and go with the seven nothing lead, but they decided not to. Well, Glenn sets a kick. I don't see a 16 on there. I'm just going to well, assume. Normally fewer kicks, but yeah. Uh, yeah, it's normally Steve Hewer and I looking for 16, and uh, we don't have unless Steve just left his jersey at home and had to wear that one. So anyway, the kick's going to go to Willie Bush. Bush drops the ball, picks it back up at the goal line, and it's going to be ruled a touchback. So a muffed kickoff that goes back into the end zone. As long as you don't have possession, you get it at the 20. And uh, that worked out great for Wayne, I'll tell you that, Mike, because he wasn't going to get much past the 10-yard line. 
Six nothing Rockets lead at Wayne's opening possession here in the first quarter. Well, Keith, we've talked about him. Now we finally get to see him. The freshman quarterback, Lorenzo Guess, who's had an up and down season here. Well, I'll tell you what, if you're a freshman, you're allowed to have an up and down season. Just the experience sure. that he's getting quarterbacking in these games this year is just unreal and the, the prospect of him being a senior quarterback leading this team That's should be scary, scary to all the to all teams scary. in that mega division. Guess hands the ball off. That's the second man through. That's number 22, Bush. Bush still, going. still making an effort and give him three. Talk about second efforts. You know, the Wayne Westland schools, as most of us know, they don't have uh, football in the junior highs this year. That's why they passed that rule that he can play. Uh, ninth graders are allowed to play. And you're looking at me kind of puzzled here, I didn't but know they didn't have football in the junior high schools yeah. this year. Well, that's why ninth graders are allowed to play on the on the JV or varsity at the high school. Holy smokes. I never even knew that. Well, that's going to kill any kind of program that these two schools try to establish. Reggie McCarthy out in front. Again, the handoff to number 22, Bush. And Willie's going to struggle for about a yard. It's going to set up third down and a long five. Keith, I should correct myself. I assume they don't have it because I can't understand why they'd let a ninth grader come up to play varsity football if he's got a program at his own school. Yeah, we're going to check on that. Yeah, we, would, uh, we should check we'll on that. We'll definitely it. tell you in the third quarter whether or not that's true. But in a lot of school districts, Wayne Westland, yeah, I don't want to say he's one of the few, but there's a lot of high schools now that are letting ninth graders into their high schools. They're really kind of changing the systems yeah. around the education. They're going to middle schools for 6th, 7th, and 8th grade. Right. right. So uh, maybe that's just the rule that the High School Athletic Association has, that you can let a ninth grader, being some schools actually do have ninth graders in high school. Yeah. Anyway, Guest goes back to throw, fires it over. Good-looking pass. Intercepted. But I believe it is picked off, and it is. Dave Irwin picks it off for the Rockets. And uh, really wasn't a badly thrown ball, no, but just great, great coverage, coverage by Irwin. And the Wayne receiver, Jason Overton, really didn't help out his quarterback coming back for the football. So the Rockets will start up first down and 10 at the 29-yard line. Keith, that was a great individual effort there by Ir Let's see if we can see it here by Irwin. Watch him step in front of this ball. He said not a bad thrown pass. Boy, just it a really great, wasn't. That it was really a great wasn't. interception. Yeah, it was a great play. And Overton really didn't help out his quarterback that much on the play. So tough break for Lorenzo Guest. Good break for the Rockets. First down and 10. Morrison goes back. He's going deep to Besco. Oh, he almost had it. And Brian made a good effort for the ball. And a good throw by Brian Morrison that time. Just a little bit out of the reach of Besco. Second down and 10. Keith, I like that call. I really like that call because... After a turnover, go for it all. Let's see it here on the replay. See how he looks away, and then he comes back to him. Yeah, it was out Just of bounds out of anyway. Reach, yep. So now we saw one of those last week. Touchdown caught out of bounds. Yep. Brian led him just a little bit too much. Second down and 10 for the Rockets. Inside the 30 at the 29. And off the horn off the left side. He really didn't have his balance at the handoff. And a nice play there by John Lloyd. And give Horn a yard. Third down and nine. You're almost in four down territory. Being Glenn didn't try to kick the extra point, you got to believe. But they got two downs to get these nine yards. Yeah, that's a good play by Wayne Hyde to, to, to stop him on that key second down and ten play. After you go for that bomb, you got to stop him on second down to force him into a long third down situation here. So look for a look for a pass here by Morrison. Third and nine. Fuller and Horn in the backfield. And the pitch goes to Horn off the left side. He's got a lot of room. Cuts it back inside. And he's going to be very close to the first down. It all depends on where they mark it. I believe he's going to be a tad bit short where his knee hit. And that would set up fourth down and about a foot. But a good individual effort that time by Horn. We're going to take a measurement here, Keith. It looks, it looks a little short, Mike. Yeah, it does. It does from here. He's had a great individual effort. He made a nice cut back there. Obviously, John Glenn is uh, really geared up to, to establish a running game here early because third and ten, they pitch it out this time to the left side, and Horn makes a good individual effort. And again, Keith, the offensive line is really blowing those Wayne High guys off the line. Yeah, you see on the screen there, he's a tad bit short. So it'll be fourth down and about a foot, and there's no doubt the Rockets will go for it here. 
We've played seven minutes of the first quarter here at Wayne High. The Rockets lead at 6-0. A 41-yard run by Tarkhorn, who carried the ball all seven times. And they went for two and didn't quite get it. Well, they didn't get it at all. Not quite get it. <laughs> Did not get it. <laughs> they didn't get it. So fourth down and about a foot. Triple set in the backfield. That's Mike Bent. I imagine him and Fuller are going to be lead blocking probably off to the right side the way they got Bent lined up. Wayne's got everybody stacked on the line. Sure do. And again, it's Horn. Straight oh, through. Yeah. Finally, Ben Horn oh, still boy. on his feet. And another touchdown for Tark Horn. 19 yards this time. And boy, Mike, you see that happen a lot in goal line type defensive situations. Great blocking by the Glen offensive line. They just completely blew that Wayne defensive line out, and Horn just waltzed in. You know, Keith, it's, it's really not the defensive line because they did what they had to do. They pinched, they went low. And Tarkhorn made a great individual effort. He went over the guys, and there was no linebackers, or excuse me, they were probably blocked, really. And uh, he just saw the end zone and went for it. So just a great individual play again by Tarkhorn. It's having quite a game here. i got to imagine this is still Steve Hewer, and if it's not, then my apologies to whoever it is. Well, we we're do have a couple other guys. told the press box that it, is, that it is him. And we got a flag on the play. And if that's against Wayne, they'll probably go for the two because that'll move it half the distance to the goal line, and that's what's going to happen. And yeah, they're coming back in. His horn's coming back out, out and fuller. And there's Brian Morrison talking to head coach Chuck Gordon, and he's coming in. So 12-0, 443 to go here in the first quarter, and Glenn's going to go for two. That was a good play here. I mean, oh yeah, yeah. got to do it. And uh, again, same play, triple set in the backfield with Benton Fuller. And you got to believe it's going to be Tark Horn again. It's Horn off the right side, follow. Wow, wow. Fuller and Bent. <laughs> Just uh, it's a couple kinda, big fellas there. Uh, yeah. Did it, was that an athletic effort there? Or are you going to no. get blocking credit there? <laughs> uh, Keith, I uh, think Bruis would have waltzed I, in. I was going to say, I think you could do that. <laughs> Tark Horn. Look at that. Great uh, There's blocking. the replay of the touchdown there, and just a great job by Horn. And uh, the Rockets have came out to play here so far in the first quarter. And if you're Wayne High and Coach Chuck Houghton, you've got to be a little bit stunned here. Yeah, you really do. <clears throat> With four, uh, looks like 443, we really can't tell a couple uh, Probably, yeah. a couple of bulbs burned out there. 14-0, Wayne High leading. But you do, you have to be a little bit shell-shocked here. It's your home field. Uh, it is bleeding, the Wayne. Though. It is the Glenn's Wayne. Glenn's leading, though. Right. He said I'm, Wayne leading. <laughs> no, no, I'm, I'm sorry. Did I say that? <laughs> You're going to say, oh, half the viewers are going to be shocked. They're going to be shocked. Yeah, it would be shell-shocked, but... <laughs> No, you got to be shell shocked if you're Wayne High. You're on their home field. It is the Wayne Glen game. It's not just another ball game. And uh, down 14 nothing early. It's got to affect them a little bit. Let's see if they can come back here too. So Hewer set to kick off back deep. Number 22 Willie Bush. And the kick is going to go. What a booming kick! And Bush again has trouble handling it. Picks it up at the five to the ten. Willie with a little bit of speed and he's going to finally be brought down at the 26 by Dave Irwin. And Irwin, the man that intercepted the ball, also making a saving tackle there on the kick return. So Wayne will start off first down and 10. And there you see freshman quarterback Lorenzo Guess trotting out on the field. Keith, if you're a Wayne Memorial fan, this is the time right now. You got to establish something here. Yeah, this is. You got to move the ball a little bit. You don't even have to score. You just got to move it down the field. Get out. Get some good field position here. Yeah, this is an important possession for Wayne. They'll start off first and ten at their own 26. Guess goes back to throw. The rush is on. It's Besco. Throws it straight up in the air. And wow. oh my goodness, Jason Fuller. Almost had a free six points, but he wasn't expecting it. It really just hit him in the hands. I don't even think he was looking for it. <laughs> the boy Brian Besco came straight through from his linebacker spot. Let's take a look at it here. Lorenzo would have done a boy, he really came in there. Uh, he'd have done a good job just to let go of it. But he did have two guys over there, yeah. Gerald Adams and uh, Reggie McCarthy. Looked like a wide receiver screen of some sort. Because uh, 
Gerald Adams is wide receiver are split out to the left here. So McCarthy and Bush still in the backfield. It'll be second down and 10. Rockets giving Lorenzo a little bit of trouble here in his first time seeing him. Little foot pass. Oh, oh, oh it's gonna be out. gone. Gerald Adams. Nice move. And Glenn did a good job to pick Gerald back up. And the referee goes down. And a great throw by Lorenzo. Guess over to Adams. 24 yards. Keep co the uh, quarterback here for John Glenn was really playing off Jake Henry. I think he was looking for the run and uh, kind of surprising there. Just a quick out pass. And Adams took it up, made a nice move. Gained those 24 yards. Take a look at it again here. Nice, nice move there, and see Bent and Houghton making the tackle. Yeah, Matt, Matt Houghton getting a little excited. <laughs> <laughs> I talked to him uh, yesterday after Glenn's girls basketball game. I think he was ready to play right on the basketball court yesterday. Oh, I can imagine. It'll be a tough week at the Houghton household. Uh, I remember last what week. happened last year. Remember that one? I do remember. Yes. Yeah, well. So Wayne will have a first down. Their first first down of the game. This is only their second possession, though. Glenn out in front, 14 nothing. 3:50 to go here in the first quarter. Mike Brewis along with Ed Contos and me, Keith Burnick. Ed, uh, Ed might be down there a little, freezing up a little bit down there. I don't know. He's a big ice block. Yeah. <laughs> he is here with us, though. We saw him in the pregame show. Let's see what the call is here, Keith. Dead ball foul. Offsides against Offsides Glenn. Of Glenn. Well, one, one thing, you know, Coach Gordon, is, I mean, I don't, he doesn't have to be concerned about anything, but you don't want to get cocky here. Glenn out early, 14-0. Right. They, they, I mean, Wayne is just one play away with guess the athlete that he is at quarterback. We already saw Gerald Adams have speed, and it's apparent that Coach Houghton's going to come out throwing the football. You know, and Glenn has not defended the pass that well all year, and I'm sure this being the ninth game of the season, Wayne High knows that, so... You know, they got to play hard and play tough this whole game. This thing ain't over yet. Long way to go. Guess hands the ball off. That's Bush off the left side. And Bush gets a tough three. Bush is a good looking runner there, Keith. He's uh, not that big, but he sure runs tough. That's a good penalty there for uh, Way Memorial to give him a first down and five. So, gain four yards. Now it's uh, second and one. So, if I'm Coach Howden, I'm gonna, I might throw this ball into the end zone right here, Keith. You really got nothing to lose. Give him a little surprise here. Like I said, Glenn has not defense the pass very well this year. Gerald Adams into this side. Marcus Adams out to the far side. Back to throw goes Guess. A little bit of a quarterback draw. And Guess should hold on to the football. Sure better. Boy, he's holding it a little bit like a loaf of bread out there, but uh, he gets enough for the first down. Yeah, he really was. He's lucky. Nice call, though. Quarterback draw. Obviously, they saw something. Glenn must have been going back you know, in their uh, pass defense. Defense. I'm trying to send keep, everybody. I'm you know. trying to keep stats up here, Mike. And my Your left hand cold, is eh? so cold, I can't even grip the pen. <laughs> <laughs> Not that I was the most artistic of writers in high school or college, anyway. But I'm yeah. really in trouble reading my own writing. First down and ten for the Zebras. They're inside the 40, about the Rocket 36. We have two minutes to go here in the first quarter. Guess hands the ball off to Bush. He's going to try to string it outside. I don't think it's going to work. No. Oh, yes, he yeah, got face mask. And Matt Houghton. Uh, he, he definitely is intense, isn't he? Yeah. Got another penalty. And, uh, maybe too intense. You know what? This might be... Uh, Keith, this might be on the Wayne High bench. I don't know because no, I think it's against Matt Howden. Well, Howden, Derek uh, Vesco is grabbing him, and he's like saying, "Look, look, fella." Tell you what, though, Howden face mask, but he did. He wrote him out of bounds, and I got a feeling that they might have either gave him two. Let's see what I think happens. They gave him an unsportsmanlike conduct because it looked like that flag was after the play, like almost for a verbal thing. Let's take a look at it here. Glenn had him strung out here. There's really no reason. See, there was a flag, but I was thinking that there's another flag that came. Was, and maybe Wayne High was uh, really screaming and yelling because he, he did take him hard out of bounds. 
and I didn't see another flag for Maybe that. Maybe one of the officials will just down like Pacific time. It's called the same foul. Now we're just going to get the face yeah. mask. They didn't even made so it. Was. That's probably what it was. Both officials made the call the same thing. Boy, in high school, too, it's an automatic 15. There's no that 5 or 15 like you have in the pros where there's non flagrant or not. So there is. There's an unsportsmanlike conduct foul against Corn. There you take a look at head coach Chuck Gordon, and he cannot be happy with this. There it goes. You know what? That could have been because he did ride him out of bounds, and I think the Wayne High coaching staff was uh, pleading their case there. And the referee came over and did give him the penalty. So 30 yards marched off against Glenn. You know, specifically Matt Howden. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'll tell you what, Derek Besco, I don't know whether he was happy or not, but he pulled Matt aside and he said, look, let's let him beat us on our own here. And uh, Lorenzo Guest is going to take a timeout here for Wayne. So 1.54 to go. Wayne has moved the ball fairly well on this drive, but uh, two 15-yard penalties against Matt Houghton have given the Zebras a first down and 10 at the 11-yard line. Keith, we talked about it a little bit. Wayne had to, had to do something in this possession, and they definitely are doing it. If you're John Glenn, this is really the first time that they've uh, faced Wayne here tonight because it was the second play of the game. They intercepted that pass, so this is a real test for them uh, against that Wayne offense with the... Uh, you know, the passing game that Lorenzo uh, Guest comes out and shows for Wayne High. Even though he's a freshman, you know, he does show a lot of poise back there. Like you said, I'd hate to see him as a senior. We were looking at some of these Wayne Memorial records, and he might uh, might put, a, put his name in there for a couple of them. long lengthy timeout as you take a look at Matt Houghton over there talking to his coach Keith Gordon didn't really look too mad over there either <laughs> watching him on screen how he's gonna so mad he's gonna sit down and relax for a while yeah he might do that Bush and McCarthy in the backfield Adams and Adams Gerald in close to us Marcus out to the far side. First down and 10 for Wayne. They're at the 11-yard line. Glenn up 14-0. 1.54 to go here in the first quarter. Yes, back to throw. Got time. Fires to Adams. Oh, he caught it. What a catch. What a catch by Gerald Adams. And the Zebras are on the scoreboard. Wow. What a, hey, Keith, what a nice pass, too. Oh, a tremendous right there. play. And Lorenzo Guess, who started off a little bit shaky, is now two of five for 35 yards. And this great catch by Adams. Holy smoke. Wow. Nice play action fake there, too, by Guess. There's a froze Jake Henry over there on the corner. Let's see if they're going to go. It looks like they're going to go for two here, Keith. And Wayne's going to go for two. McCarthy in the Time backfield. And now, now what's up? Wayne takes another timeout. Take a look at it again here. What a great catch by Gerald Adams. Keith, we've seen both uh, quarterbacks use that type play where they look one way and come back and throw across the field. It's a nice play that freezes the cornerback, and it worked for Glenn almost. Uh, Vesco couldn't quite get to the ball, but it worked great for Wayne there on that touchdown. Well, I'm glad our uh, programming department has decided to do some Wayne High games now in the future from now on. <laughs> because the Rockets are going to make Will the playoffs this year, and I'll bet uh, Wayne High is going to make it for the years to come. And this young man, a quarterback, that was a brilliant throw. And a great catch by Adams. Adams looks like a pretty darn good receiver, Keith. We saw uh, kids from Taylor Center had some nice receivers, but Adams looks like he's fitting the bill for Wayne High he's tonight. 6'1", 160-pound senior. Wayne with a lot of young people on their team. A lot of people returning. Look up and down. I see a lot of 95s. More 95s really than anything else. Yes. Which means a lot of juniors on this team. Glenn not really as fortunate. They have a lot of seniors. They're losing a lot of people. 
Ed just told the people in the truck he thinks they're going to go with a power sweep, so we'll see how good Ed's hearing is. <laughs> <laughs> He's been in there listening to the... Well, it's going to be difficult to do a sure power is. sweep. There's no backs in the backfield. <laughs> Back the throw goes Guess He's going to drive. Nice cut. Oh, Wayne cuts it to 14 to 8. That looked like a, uh, obviously a naked bootleg there by Guess because Vesco came in on the rush and uh, he couldn't quite make the stop because Guess was running all the way. We can watch this again. See Besco come in from his defensive uh, end position. Just overran him. Nice cutback by Lorenzo Guest for the two point conversion. Boy, what a super job. Take a look at some of the Wayne crowd. A little more empty seats on both sides of the field than I would have predicted. Of course, I didn't figure my feet would be frozen right now either. <laughs> I can say thank you on the air to that. The Wayne High people providing me with a nice hot cup of oh, coffee. Oh, wow. Hey, how about thank that? Thank you very much. And uh, I'm happy to, happy to accept that cup of coffee. <laughs> yeah, they're complaining in the truck now. It's, it's, a, it's a balmy 72 in that doggone truck. Wow, what a kick here. Beautiful kick. I'll tell you what, if they don't go in the end zone, you got to get it. And Cosby, Cosby's waving it out in. Pushing it in there. So. so Wayne's defense, which has been unable to stop Glenn at all, now with a huge emotional lift here, at least in the first quarter, after the nice pass by Lorenzo Guess and the brilliant catch by Gerald Adams. Keith, after last week's game, I wouldn't mind seeing a nice offensive game here. Uh, great ball game last week, but it was a defensive struggle all the way. And tonight we're seeing a little bit of offense. 14-8 here with a uh, minute 39 left in the first quarter. Besco and Hewer out to this side. And it's still Tark Horn and Jason Fuller. Surprise, the pitch to Horn off the left side. He's got a lot of room. Horn up across the 35 to the 36. And I'll tell you what. He's blocking and tackling. Yeah, blocking Wayne has got to step up on defense. I mean, Glenn is just coming at him with the same thing time after time. Tark Horn is over 100 yards here with a minute 30 to go in the first quarter. Unbelievable. This time he splits out as a wide out. And Mike Kidder in the there. backfield. Kidder had two carries coming into last week's game against Farmington Harrison. I think he carried twice last week. And Morrison goes Good back. Pass. He's in trouble and he's going to be sacked. A loss of six yards and a nice play there by Corey McClellan. Well, McClellan fought off the uh, fought off the blocker, Keith, and came in from his linebacker position. It looked like Morrison wanted to throw the ball right away, but McClellan was right there in his face and he really couldn't do it, try to get away, but McClellan made a good stop. Well, once they had Horn split out, Wayne goes, shoo, we don't have to worry about him right. running the ball off the right side. <laughs> let's, let's go at it. And Horn is split out again. It's Kidder by himself in the backfield. Vesco and Hewer out to the far side. Morrison rolls this side, fires it. Way too high. Picked off by Lorenzo Guess. Look out. And Look out. he's going to go. He goes. Oh, Lorenzo Guess is in for the touchdown. Gee whiz. That was, that was quite a run back. Can you correct me if I'm wrong, but did John Glenn run the same play again? Did it look like the same play? Boy, Morrison just completely overshot him, and look who got the ball but the freshman star quarterback. And he knows wow. what to do with it when he's got it, boy, doesn't he? Like you said, he carries it like a loaf of bread, but he, he put it down and scored. Take a look at it. It, it looked like for the same Hewer. play to me. Way too high. Boy, he had, he had Besco open for a touchdown. Boy, he carries that ball like you said, geez. I think Kidder tried to get him, but no way. So Wayne's going to go for two again. The game's tied with 27 seconds to go here in the first quarter. Keith, we haven't seen Wayne play this year, so we're not really sure if they have a kicker, but they are going for two again, obviously. Maybe it's the wind tonight. There's quite a bit of wind out there. Too much time. 
Delay against Wayne, so. Maybe they want to bring it back so they can throw the ball into the end zone. Just coming over know. to talk. Well, you take a look at the end zone and the flag and the wind is blowing, Michael. You were, you were, you were right about that. Yeah, it really is. Well, don't you remember the pregame? We were freezing. <laughs> wind blowing in our face. I'd forgotten about it. That's how cold I am. This fabulous marching band walking by us. That said, there's going to be a little option pass here, and uh, that's wrong again. So we're going to stop using that. Another two-point conversion. This time to Reggie McCarthy. Boy, and that looked far too easy. Sure did. And Wayne is out in front, 16 to 14, here in the first quarter. Holy smokes. Well, Keith, it's 14 nothing, and we're talking about John Glenn getting maybe a little bit cocky. Couldn't really tell from here, but uh, I don't, I don't really think they were. I just think Wayne Hyde just came back with a flurry, and uh, unbelievable, 16 to 14 with 27 seconds left. I said Wayne Hyde was winning. Hey, now they're winning. has allowed four points in the conversions. I mean, and, and that's pretty just, points. I mean, it took Harrison 48 minutes and two overtimes to get a score against Glenn, and Wayne scored a touchdown and gotten four points out of conversions from him in less than a quarter. Now, offside on Wayne. Now, Cosby had the ball at the 15. That was a pretty decent kickoff the way this wind's blowing. It isn't helping. Keith, it's, I'm surprised they've got Cosby back here. Uh, you think Houghton would be back there to, re to receive the kickoff. They've got Cosby back, and it's kind of a, a strange-looking uh, alignment back there. Yeah, but it is. He's not as deep as the rest of them, so I, yeah, I don't know either. Jason over to the 6'5", 210-pound tight end. A pretty good leg. Yeah. Looks like Scott Wetmore was offsides or possibly Bernard Hicks. And it's going to be Fuller to the 30. Jason out over the 45 to the 47. Boy, that's great field position. You know, Mike, we talked about uh, during the year, people that have watched this uh, game in a game out, heaven forbid if they've done that. <laughs> Got to find other things for those people. Yeah, they better to do. find something else to do on Tuesday night, that's for sure. <laughs> but uh, if they have watched them, listen, they know, you know, we've kind of commented about supposedly going to the well too many times. And here's one time I'm going to contradict at least both of us. I would have kept handing the ball to Horn until they proved me oh, they could yeah. stop him. Yeah, I mean, definitely. Glenn's tried to throw the football, and they haven't done it the two games we've done. And, and Wayne hasn't stopped Horn. I'd just keep going to Horn as day and night. There it is. Horn off the left side, and boy, even if it seems like Wayne gets him down, he gets five yards. Right, very hard. And you're right, Keith. You're absolutely right. Why not just keep giving the ball? They can't stop him. Until they stop him, just keep giving it to him. Well, I'm not going to compare Tarkhorn to Barry Sanders, but I remember watching Sanders the first couple of years with the Lions. You'd think he was stopped, but yet it would still say second right. and five or third and three, right. and he always managed to go forward. The same thing Tarkhorn's doing. That's the end of the first quarter. Wayne leads it 16-14. Let's go down to Ed. He's got something for us. Ed? Mike and Keith, the one thing that uh, Coach Houghton is trying to take away from uh, John Glenn is the ability to run the ball and sweeps to the outside. He spent much of the first quarter talking to uh, cornerback Scott Wetmore and James Bullwagon to play close to the line of scrimmage. He's trying to take away the run. What might work for John Glenn later on in the game is a long pass. Back to you guys upstairs. Thanks, Ed, and uh, they're definitely going to have to do something because I don't care how many points Wayne does score. It's going to be awfully difficult to beat, beat the Rockets if you can't stop the, stop the run. That's what they like to do, and Horn with well over 100 yards here, but amazingly, Glenn trails by two, 16 to 14. So the Rockets will start off after switching sides of the field. First down, and uh, well, second and five at the Zebra 47-yard line. Let's go! Let's go! Come on! 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 Come on!
Morrison hands it off the horn. Got a whole oh. bunch of room off the right he's side. Gone. He's gone. And he's, can he turn the corner? Oh. No. Good play by James Bone Wagner. And uh, Tark Horn. Well, I thought he was gone. Huge. Huge. He came. turned that corner. Bowmanger came came across the field, had the angle on him. Brought it down. Four more yards for Tark Horn. Holy smokes! He's a he's having a Tyrone Wheatley day. We haven't seen a runner rush like this since Wheatley about three years ago at Robichaud. Keith has a great block on the right side there. By uh, couldn't see who it was. Could have been Mike Bent. Nice first. block to open that hole. Sure was. First down and 10 for the Rockets. This time they give it to Fuller. Well, that's Cosby. Cosby on the outside. He's going to score. Jeremy Cosby from 23 yards. Wow. Well, you want an offensive game, Michael. We got it. No doubt about it. Holy smokes. Keith, and you know what? Wayne's starting to plug up the middle, and Glenn's just taking it to the outside, well, using that speed. That was a good call by... Chuck Gordon there. And now Glenn's going to take a timeout because they faked it, I believe, to Horn. And everybody says, everybody says, well, Horn's getting it again. And there goes Jeremy around the outside for the touchdown. Nice, nice run there by Cosby. Keith, if I'm John Glenn, I'm going to go for two here because that's going to put me up by six points. You know something? When it's almost like in high school. Once you establish yourself of going right. for two, exactly. you go for two the rest of the game. You go for two the first time, you're doing it the rest of the ball game. It's 20 to 16. You know, get two more up there. 22 16. Now, if if Wayne does score again, you know they're going to go for two. Well, because they've been doing that. You know, I, I like a, a defensive team in, in pros, college, and in high school that blitzes a lot. And if I was Glenn, I would really be shooting some people at guess. Yeah. And then if he hits you and burns you, well, he's going to have to do it all night because being a ninth grader, you give him a little bit of different looks once in a while, and I think that could really puzzle him a little bit. They're, they cannot afford to lay back on defense and just let this kid pick him apart because he'll do that with his running ability. Out to the far side, Horn and Hewer. And it's Besco over close to us on this side. Glenn going for two here. Morrison rolls to his right. He's got bent, but uh, no. Oh, he got it. How the heck? How did he catch that? Well, <laughs> Mike bent for a, a two-point conversion, and I don't know how. to see this again because really Morrison put it about the only place he could, down low and away. And bent went down and got it. Boy, that is. Look at the coverage. Oh, my. What a catch by Mike Bent. Boy, that was a great catch getting his hand under there. Well, that's, so we're going to go to a break here as Glenn with a two-point conversion. They lead the Zebras. This has got to be one of the wild ones, 22 to 16. <laughs> we'll be back in a minute. College football fans, ABC Sports and ESPN have your season ticket to the best and most gridiron action. College football pay-per-view. In addition to the games on ESPN and your ABC station, get extra games from the nation's top teams and conferences that you won't see anywhere else. Just scored and got a two-point conversion to take the lead over the Zebras, 22 to 16. Keith Burnick along with Mike Bruce and Ed Contos, who's down on the field. And Glenn just kicked the ball out of bounds, and uh, the Zebras declined it, and they'll take over first down at 10 at the 35. Good field position here for Wayne. Gus came out and struggled. Looked like a little motion there, but apparently not. And McCarthy is going to get about a yard. And I'll tell you what, Mike, you can already tell we played about 12 minutes that Glenn, if they can at all force Gus into a few turnovers, they're going to win this ball game. I and mean, it's just their Wayne just has not showed a lot defensively. And of course, Glenn hasn't either. But I'm just if they're going to have to force Lorenzo Gus into hurrying up his throws, and that's going to be the key, whether or not Wayne. If Wayne can throw the football on Glenn, this one's going to go down to the end. Exactly, if, Keith. If, if I'm the defensive coordinators for both teams, I'm sweating out there. I don't care how cold it is. Both these offenses are on fire tonight. 
And I don't think Wayne's going to be able to run the ball too much against this Glenn defense. But if they can throw, it's going to come right down to the gun. Guess on the option play and all kinds of rockets there. Jeremy Fuller and Vesco amongst the first two. And Lorenzo's going to lose about four. And they did. They shot everybody that time. Now you talked about it. And uh, obviously the defensive uh, coordinator for John Glenn was listening to you, Keith. Uh, yeah, probably. No, <laughs> No, really. I mean, you, you do. That's how you stop the uh, a good, effective passer. you got to put some pressure on him. And they did that time, and it worked out for him. You know, occasionally you have a senior experienced quarterback at a, at a good program in high school. You can get burnt with the blitz. But I like, I'd like my chances if I'm John Glenn blitzing against a ninth grade quarterback. Gerald Adams out to this side, close to us. Marcus Adams out to the far side. It's still McCarthy and Bush. In the backfield, Lorenzo, big third down play here. A little bit of a fake. Oh, he and did. fumbles the football, and we'll have to see. And he was popped. He sure was. And I think Glenn's got the football. The question is, maybe we see a replay on this. It almost looked like he, he was in the motion of throwing. And the Rockets will have the ball first down and 10 at the 26-yard line. Boy, what a pop. Boy, I, don't, I didn't see who that was, but they really came in. Let's see if he was in the motion of throwing. Oh, I don't know. I, don't, I, I really couldn't tell. I couldn't tell either. If we couldn't tell on a slow motion replay, then I'm sure the referee couldn't tell. So first down and 10 for the Rockets at the 26-yard line. Harkhorn still in a tailback. Why not? We'll get you stats here in a moment. It's going to be Cosby. And Jeremy struggles for about three. He has a 23-yard touchdown run. Horn with runs of 41 and 19. And those are Glenn's three scores. Keith, give the credit to the offensive line here, too, tonight for John Glenn. These kids are doing a good job. They're blowing these guys off the ball. And again, we talked about that before the uh, game began tonight in our pregame. And it is happening for John Glenn. They are really pushing him off the ball. I have, uh, of course, very unofficially, probably 10 yards either way with my stats, but Horn <laughs> with 13 carries, 154 yards, and we have nine minutes to go here in the first half. The pitch to Horn off the short side of the field. Clark on his feet, and this time he gets nothing. And that's the first time he's been held to a no-gain situation. So 14 carries, 154 yards for Tark. It'll set up third down and five. Well, that indicated that uh, Coach Houghton talked to uh, Wetmore and Bone Wagner about coming up and stopping that run, and that time they really did. So I imagine Glenn still has two downs to get this five yards. Both teams going for two almost every time they score, and both teams going for it on fourth down. Morrison's going to throw this time. He has Horn in front of him. He can run for the first Wide down. Open. And, boy, that's... Uh, I, I don't know what Brian was doing, but I, I thought maybe there was going to be a light hit, too, because usually when you're quarterback and you give yourself up, and he got smushed. Isn't that the NFL, though? I, I thought it was at any level now. I, I thought once you're in high school, once your knee hits the ground, yeah, you're true. considered down. See if we got to look at that again, guys. You can uh, do that for us. I saw the official talking to the uh, John Glenn staff, so I'm sure they were asking for that because that would have been a big penalty. Yeah, I mean, gave him a first down. Your knee's down. You're down. He was. He was. Yeah, we'll you are right. Let's see if we can quick. see that again. We'll keep you up to date if the play starts here. And he's definitely down. That's a late hit. And I don't think he got the first down here as we come back. That was a definite late hit. And Wayne's going to take over on downs. First down and 10 at the 16. And Ed just uh, over on Glenn's side of the field just said the Glenn coaches were pretty irate over that. And they had legitimate beef. And Wayne will definitely take over, well short of the first down. Well, especially when Matt Houghton had two penalties called against him uh, that pushed the ball down for Wayne High. And here we get something similar where there's a late hit, and it just was not called, Keith. 
You're right, because uh, you know I thought that the, it wasn't really a late hit, but you're right. When the quarterback goes down or anybody goes down in high school, if the knee goes down, they're down, and he was definitely down on that play. So big defensive stop, though, for Wayne High on fourth down. Oh. So 7-10 to go here in the first half. Wayne deep in their own territory. They held Glenn following the turnover. The handoff to Bush. Wow, nowhere to go. And Bush has nowhere to go. Is right. Just back to the line of scrimmage. That looked like last week's game. Just a pile of bodies in the middle of the field, stopping each other. You take a look at the Wayne sideline. The guys don't look too cold, I guess, when you're down there playing. I know some of our camera people got to be uh, freezing their buns up. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not too warm up here, I'll nah, tell you. But at least we're not getting that wind. No. Lorenzo Guess with Adams, either side of him. It's Bush and McCarthy in the backfield. Second and 11. Fish goes back to Bush. Got a little bit of a hole this time. But oh, he's, oh, still, he's still on, on his feet. Boy, we've seen great second and sure third have. efforts by both Bush, Willie Bush for Wayne High, and of course Tark Horn for the Rockets. And he'll get about seven. He'll set up third down and a long five. Six minutes to go here in the second quarter. Okay. Willie Bush is deceptive because uh, he's five foot seven, 175 pounds. So not only has he got a little bit of weight on him, but he's kind of small and he's going under some of these guys. Ooh, right there, right oh, underneath him. He did a them. great job of keeping sure his knee off the ground. This is where Glenn has been getting killed by Wayne, and not necessarily in these third down, but on these passing situations where he guesses he's going to be able to do what he wants with it. And what a fine catch by Jason Overton. Hey, man. We've seen some great catches here tonight. There's no Holy doubt about it. Smokes. Boy, he's a big target, too. 6'5", 210 pounds. And what a great job by Lorenzo Guest. This kid looks tremendous. Well, I'll tell you what, give Coach Houghton some credit there because that's a gutsy call. He turns around, does a complete pirouette, and just throws the ball out there right in the middle of all the John Glenn defenders. There you take a look at it. What a fine catch by Overton. First down and 10. Back to throw. He's going deep to Adams. And he just goes it up on the head of Stevenson. He's going to go for the touchdown. Oh, goodness. Holy wow. Wow. Brent Washington had it in his hands. Popped straight up in the air. And Gerald Adams. What a ball game. And we're tied at 22. What a ball game. Good sakes. Well, Washington had it. I mean, he stood there. He was waiting to pick it off, and he, it just hit off his hands. Holy cow. And Adams, just great speed once again. So, guess what? We're going for two. This is a crazy game. Reggie McCarthy, the lone setback. Look at this. And In the middle. No, I didn't get it. But I'll tell you what. <laughs> Lorenzo Guess looks super. I mean, even though that ball was underthrown, this this kid is poised. And he just flung it out there. Nice long throw, boy. boy. Washington's going to be looking at this on film and just shake his head. I mean, Matt Houghton tried to get there, too, and just couldn't. See the fans yeah, going crazy. Quick. Fans are getting their money's worth tonight. There's no doubt about it. So we're tied at 22 here with 4.50 to go in the first half. Well, this is unbelievable. Exciting game. There's no doubt about that. It sure is, but can you believe, Michael, though, the way the Glenn defense has, has played? Although there's been a couple big plays, but you got to give Wayne credit. They've, oh, definitely. And I, I'm just shocked. I never would have guessed that uh, Wayne would have had 22 points with five minutes to go in the first half. Well, I, I, I really think that Wayne High is a, is a team that, as we see the man who scored the touchdown there, Gerald Adams. Gerald Adams. I think Wayne High, you know, they're all or nothing, Keith. 
with Lorenzo Guest, using the freshman quarterback. He's going to either be on or he's going to be off. Tonight he's on, and they're scoring some points. Well, that was a 70-yard touchdown pass. Glenn better get hope this bounces in the end zone, too. Boy, that is playing close to the back sure there. Is. That thing went in there by a yard. If that's two, if that's two yards this way, Mike, Glenn's got the ball first and ten at the one if they fall on it. Yeah, well, I think they're going to have dangerous. to move back a little bit on that kickoff. Well, there you take a look at some of the crowd. It is a cold night here, but uh, not cold for Mr. Guest. Three for six for about 105 yards and a couple of touchdowns. They must be showing the side of the stands there because they're, it's filled in front of us. Four fifty to go. And off the horn off the right side. <laughs> and he's yards. Ten more for Mr. Horn. He, well, I'm gonna say he's gonna get two hundred for the end of the half, the way things are going. Really good. It'd really be to Glenn's advantage here to be short of the first down, although I, I wouldn't throw the ball anymore at all. Keith, and we haven't seen Derek Besco at all. I mean, not even at his old uh, position uh, playing split end or tight end. Well, like, like uh, Coach Gordon said, he's going to go with a hot back and horns. There's really no sense to play anybody else back there. And off the horn, running fine. And in the seven more. I feel like I'm watching uh, Tony Bowles out here running. 16 for Glenn. carries, 171 yards for Tark Horn. Clock continuing to move, 4.06 to go. Well, if I'm Glenn, though, Mike, I'm, I'm a tad bit worried, although. You know, the Glenn coaching staff obviously doesn't have this on their mind, but from a fan and a broadcaster, Brian Morrison, the last six quarters, has, has not looked as we've heard he's looked over the over the past eight ball games, right. and that's got to be a cause for concern because you go into the state playoffs and you keep running horn up the left side like they just did right there. And Tark, well, this is like schoolyard football for him. 17 more for Horn. Give him 188 on the day. Off tackle, off tackle, Keith. Every, every other play is off tackle, and they're just taking it wide. This kind of game you dream of as a running back. I you mean, ain't just absolutely he, dream of these things. He just can do whatever he wants. Mike, he, he's out there deciding what he wants to yeah, do. He wasn't touched no until problem. he got the 16 yards. Glenn doing a tremendous job up front. First and ten from the Zebra 45. And off the horn. He's going to get a little tired. <laughs> Four more. It's going to be a good tired, I'll tell you that. He's not a two-way player, so you can't use that on me. That's right. That's right. That right. game last week, and that was a good one. I was laughing. <laughs> Say, I told you Glenn's defense been on the field all day. They're going to get tired. He said, don't matter. Cause don't they all matter. Play. They all play offense. Yeah, he is tired. There he goes. And in comes, look like, uh, who is it, Houghton? Well, Glenn's going to take a timeout here. It has been Kidder when they spelled him, but uh, it looks like it's Jason Fuller that's yeah. coming in. So 2.43 to go, and once again, we'd like to thank Matt's Catering for sponsoring all of our games this year, and I, I saved you a little uh, something today. The chicken was great. And, uh, Absolutely great. We'd like to thank them for sponsoring all of our games here on Continent 11, and uh, hopefully they will continue to sponsor our John Glenn playoff games. Give Matt a call, 278-6400. And uh, usually the mats come up with a big graphic, but uh, due to the tundra cold, everything's freezing up. Uh, it is cold. And speaking of freezing up, too, uh, I would like to apologize because we usually cover the bands for all the people who are here, the booster clubs and stuff, but... Uh, we're going to be unable to do so. Uh, the computer graphics went down due to the cold out here, and uh, we're losing some other things. So we're going to present you the third and fourth quarter of the football game, and we'll do, we'll do a good job with the band for the Glenn fans at the playoffs. 2.43 to go. Second down and five. 22-22 here, a wild one here at Wayne High. The pitch does go to Houghton. Oh, you were, you were right, Michael. And Matt 
picks up six yards. Now I'm going to say, where's Besco? <laughs> Well, yeah, Matt's been, well, Just, uh, I don't know how you keep him out of the lineup, though. <laughs> I know, that's true. <laughs> I asked him if he's going to run a tailback. He said, I hope so. Yeah. Well, maybe they're, maybe they're saving Derek for, uh, for the a third surprise quarter. against Who Bryce knows? or uh, Adrian knows? or something. They don't need him the way it's going tonight. Bunch of twos up there. 2.22 to go, 22-22. And there's Matt Houghton, number 22, with the ball. Picks up a couple yards, so, you got to love being tailback tonight for John. Uh, yeah, you're going to get the ball. You're going to get some holes. Well, I'll tell you, Glenn, no doubt, if we continued with about six minutes up on that scoreboard, probably would successfully march down the field and score. But uh, they got to be a little concerned at time. They can't afford to chunk off yards three and four at a time. There's only a minute 45 to go here in the half. Yeah, they're, they're going to have to put the ball up yeah, in the air. Yeah, they're going to need a 15, 20-yard play somewhere down the line here if they want to get it in the end zone. Morrison goes back. Hewer. And Hewer's going to get about eight. Down to about the 22-yard line. Clock continuing to run. And now Glenn's going to take a timeout, I believe. Or, nope, they're just going to move the chains for the first down. So the Rockets still have a lot of time here, but they're going to need a they're going to need a 10 or 15 yard play. Clock moving under a minute 30 to go here in the first half. Keith Burnick here, along with Mike Bruce and Ed Contos, happy to be here at Wayne High. 22-22, the Zebras and the Rockets in a must-win game for John Glenn High School. Got to throw the ball or get out of bounds here, Keith. Out in the backfield there first. goes Besco, and he's going to be out. gone. Brian Besco. Touchdown. So, we were just saying where's Derek, and one of the other brothers takes it in. And I've seen Glenn use that play an awful lot. Good misdirection reverse there. And Brian takes it in 22 yards. So, with 106 to go, the Rockets are back on top 28 22. And who knows, we might see one or two more touchdowns with a minute six left here, the way this game's going. <laughs> And Ed said they are going to go for one. Looks like Hewitt's coming out. And Ed, Ed has been 0 for 4 so far. So this oh, yeah, <laughs> here it is, a little bit better. 1 for 5. <laughs> Unless they fake it. And Ed could be right. More key than the extra point right now is whether Ed's going to be right. And uh, it's good. So, a good kick by Steve Hewer. And a great prediction by Ed Contos. The Rockets are up 29-22 with 106 to go here in the first half. And uh, I heard a lot of things, Mike, about Lorenzo Guess, and uh, he's lived up to that. Sure has. But uh, I didn't know what to expect from the Wayne High defense, and uh, haven't seen much. I haven't expected haven't too much. Haven't seen anything, uh, really. Defensively for both teams, uh, just really hasn't been there tonight. And it looks like what we agreed upon 10 minutes ago was that if Glenn can at all stop Guess from throwing the ball, uh, they'll win this game handily. But if they cannot, this game's going to come right down to the wire because it's going to be the athleticism of Lorenzo Guess against uh, the John Glenn running attack. And right now they proved equal. Sure have. 29-22 with a minute six left to go here before halftime. Well, Keith, we haven't seen a touchdown run back on a kickoff all year, have we? No. Don't want to see The way that. this game is going, we might see one of those, too. Hewer, little squiver. Picked up there by James Bonewagner. And crying out loud, out to the 46. Why sit on it? Clean, great field position. You <laughs> might three, look out. <laughs> They're down seven with 103 to go. I, I just cannot believe there's 51 points on the board in the first half. Absolutely crazy. I love it, though. Absolutely love it. Well, you're a madman, though. Last week's game was a great game, a great game to watch, great game to broadcast, but I'll tell you what, this is just as fun for me because I love to see that scoring. McCarthy and Bush in the backfield. You gotta watch Gerald Adams, obviously. Guess goes back. Here comes Besco. Oh, oh, he threw it right into the hands. Sure did. I believe Jason Batchelder. Well, I apologize to Jason, but I didn't call his name too much this year. But a great interception by Jason. 
And of course, the play was made by Brian Vesco. Yeah, I was going to say, give a lot of credit to Vesco. He's going to flex run it. What's Glenn doing here? It's a change of possession. High school football. The clock doesn't stop. 20 seconds to go. Glenn, the 35 yard line. I'm surprised they didn't try to do something with it here. Morrison is going to throw it up to Vesco. Home run, Bob. There he's he got goes. it. Wide open. Hewer. Oh, great effort by Steve Hewer. Well, Morrison showed his arm on that play, Keith, because yeah. he threw that ball 40 yard, over 40 yards. He flung that a long way. See the replay here. Boy, he threw it right to him. And that's on the blitz, too. So, Good defensive effort there by John Glenn. So 10 seconds to go here in the first half. Glenn by seven, 29-22. Morrison goes back, rush is coming. And Hewer threw his hands incomplete, four seconds. And that was a great throw by Brian that time. That was. He couldn't have threw it any better than that. He almost got sacked. Overton put a lot of pressure on. That's a big uh, defensive end there. And Derek Besco coming in now. He hasn't played. I mean, you're right, Mike. I haven't seen him that much on the on offense. I wonder if he's even hurt. So well, Derek's fresh. He's going out to the right, so they might look yeah, for him. Derek's here. going out to the far side. His brother Brian coming out to this side. And uh, either one of those two great athletes have a chance to pull this ball down. And that's where they're going. And he pulled it down. Oh, touchdown! Oh, my goodness. Holy cow, Derek wow. Besco! Wow! And that's the buzzer. <laughs> I told you those kids are great athletes. And John Glenn with a free six. Jeez. Holy smokes, we've seen it all here in the first half. Brian Morrison. Over to Derek Vesco. Holy cow. Unbelievable, Keith. And I told you we'd see another touchdown. You said I said we you might said see two one. or three. A minute and we six did, left. We almost did a minute six left, and there's another touchdown. So you what are set game. to boot the extra point. And if you like scoring and long passes, and this is a game for you. I, I can't be too sure that either team's happy with their defensive play today. But boy, offensively, everything's working. Hewer's kick is up and good. And the Rockets are going to come off the field fired up. And the Zebra is just a tad bit dejected. What a lift for the Rockets. Brian Morrison with a long pass. Let's take a look at it again before we cut away. And, uh, oh, well, let's not take a look at it. Let's pretend we did. <laughs> We'll take a look at it when we come back. That's the. Uh, well, we're going to take a look at it. So you see the Rockets coming off the field. There you see Morrison. Keep in mind, this clock's at zero right now. And Besco with the catch and a great job by Derek just to keep his feet in bounds. Nice job by the guys in the truck. And that is the end of the first half. We'll be back with third quarter action. A wild one here at Wayne Memorial High School. The Rockets lead it 36 to 22. November has got it all on passports. The Red Wings are looking good as they battle into the season with four more live games. The New Look Pistons give it all they've got in six great games on pass. The college hockey game of the week gets into gear with live coverage of the Wolverines. College football features the top teams in the nation, plus Michigan High School Championship games with exclusive coverage of the football championships from the Silver Dome. Call 1-800-4R-SPORTS and subscribe to PASS today. Industrial base. And the secrets of... With the glaciers, what you have them. They look like you have a fever? system where everybody is covered. Of course, you have to take the background and took the body. Rodham Clinton told senators to... Smears just disappeared.
Hi, this is Chris Edmonds from WNIC, inviting you to join me and many other celebrity guests at the 4th Annual Michigan Humane Society Tail Waggers Bowl, coming up Saturday, November 13th, at both the Bronco Lanes in Warren and the Woodland Lanes in Livonia. There's going to be two squads, 10 a.m. and 2 p.m., luncheons courtesy of Burton Manor in Livonia, a raffle drawing for a four-day Royal Caribbean cruise, and grand prize, a trip for two to Toronto. So join us and help raise money to support the many operations of the Michigan Humane Society's Cruelty Investigation and Rescue Division. Help us to help our furry friends. Welcome back to Wayne Memorial, where at the half, our score is 36 to 22. Ed Contos and Mike Brewis up here in the press box. And Mike, what a contrast this game between last game when John Glenn and Harrison, for that matter, couldn't even score in, regular, in the regular play. And here at the half, we have all kinds of scoring. Well, Keith and I were talking about it in the first half. And uh, i tell you what, Ed, I love this game. I mean, last week was a great ball game, hard-fought game. Came down to uh, last play of the game, 7-6, Glenn lost. I'll tell you what, this is entertaining. It's great on a cold night to come out here and have something to cheer Our about both ways. A Just a fantastic game. game. Right. We haven't seen any defense, though. That's one thing that is missing. And the one uh, confidence builder for uh, Coach Gordon's team is the kicking game. They had all kinds of trouble last week having kicks blocked. And uh, now if it comes right down to it and they need a field goal or perhaps an extra point to win the game, they know that two extra points were kicked by Steve Fewer, who's wearing his brother's number, by the way, uh, 16 instead of 4, and that has to be a big confidence booster. I'm a little bit surprised, though. They went for two points on their first touchdown. That kind of set the tone. Both teams went for two uh, until late in the uh, first half. Yeah, we kind of uh, wondered why that happened also. We weren't really sure. And again, it could have been a confidence-type thing, or possibly they just want to surprise Wayne uh, and try to go for the two-pointer. That time it failed, but... Uh, you know, the Rockets are prevailing right now, as you said, 36-22. Uh, one of the things, you know, everybody's out here freezing. I don't know what happened, but uh, they delayed the second half a good 10 minutes, Ed, and uh, we're not really sure what happened, but we're getting ready to start here. Well, the deep man for Wayne Memorial to accept this kickoff will be Willie Bush, 5-foot, 7-inch, 175-pound. You know, we don't have the list of his class. But yeah, the, he's a senior. Senior, okay. He'll be yeah, receiving they, the kickoff. They listed him uh, in the year they graduated here in the Wayne Memorial program. Now, one of the strategies for John Glenn in the second half, they've got a two-touchdown lead. When they get the ball, I'm sure, Mike, they're going to be interested, interested in eating the clock. Well, they've been giving the ball to Terry Horn quite a bit, Ed, and, uh, you know, why not keep giving it to him? He's been handling the ball. He's been... He, Unofficially, Keith had him for about 160 yards in the first half. So He did sit a great, on a, a great small portion of the second quarter, but uh, it was just a matter of him being out of breath. But uh, we'll definitely see him in the second half. Okay, here's the kick, and it's taken at about the 10-yard line. Down the field come the Zebras of Wayne Memorial. Look out! The 35, and oh, no. his feet, and finally knocked wow. down at the 50-yard line. I believe that was uh, Willie Bush. And Wayne Memorial has excellent field position. Gerald Adams with the ball. Gerald Adams was the ball carrier. Well, we've seen him tonight. He's got uh, a couple of touchdowns already. Gerald Adams. Let's see it again. Boy, he really kept his balance on this run. Well, you see Adams right here. Nice second effort as he breaks one tackle, two. Broke nice three move. tackles. And all the way to the 50-yard line. Excellent effort by Adams. So Wayne Memorial with the ball at the 50-yard line, first and 10. They run with the ball on the left side, and the gain is for about three yards. And on the stop for John Glenn, number 41, that's Jason Fuller, the six foot, 215-pound senior in on the stop. Gain on the play of three. It'll be second down and seven yards to go. Ed, if Wayne High is going to come back in this ball game, I think they do have to establish a little bit of a running ball game here. Uh, they really didn't do it in the in the first half. They put up 22 points on the board. One was the uh, interception by Guess, but it's been mainly the passing game. I think they got to establish a little bit of a running game here. And there you see quarterback Lorenzo Guess, six foot two, 170 pounder, out of the I formation in the backfield for the Zebras. Guess back to throw. Pretty good protection. A little screen pass out here to Willie Bush, and Bush goes nowhere. He's tackled for a loss. Good defensive pursuit by John Glenn on that play, Mike. Yeah, that was uh, Derek Besco playing the uh, right end for uh, defensive end for John Glenn. You know, he's isolated on a dangerous, dangerous receiver there in uh, number 22. 
and uh, he made a great individual play there. They're going to mark the ball all the way back to the 42-yard line, so a loss on the play of about 12 yards. Watch the defensive pursuit by Besco here. And it's Willie Bush who uh, came from his tailback position right there, one-on-one, -on -one, and he made the stop. Nice play. So this sets up third down and long now for the Zebras. Again, out of the I formation. And surprisingly, they keep the ball on the ground. I don't understand that play. But it did not work. Again, on the play of only about two yards, and the Zebras will have to punt it away. Well, quite possibly, Ed. They uh, probably smelled a blitz by John Glenn and probably just wanted to try to surprise him up the middle, maybe get a surprise play, maybe 10, 15 yards, or possibly even the first down. But it didn't work that time. They're going to have to punt the ball. So that'll bring up fourth down now, and and about 16 yards to go. How the Houghton. deep man for John Glenn. Duke Henry on the near side, number 22, Matt Houghton on the far side. They're not and back very far. Kick by Overton is a pretty good kick. It's fielded at about the 27 yard line by Houghton. Houghton picks up a block still on his feet. He's at midfield to the 45. Look out. Look out. Look out. to the 30. And he's going to go all the way and score the touchdown. Wow. And just like that, a three touchdown lead now for John Glenn. Well, we didn't get to see it uh, earlier in the year. He returned two punts for touchdowns against Harrison, and he did it one more time here tonight. What a great run back. Houghton took that ball at his own 27-yard line, so give him about 73 yards on the play and a very comfortable margin now for John Glenn. And I'm sure he's excited about that. I mean, uh, you're going to do it. Why not do it here with the Wayne Memorial, John Glenn, last game as a uh, regular season as a senior. And Hewer is in what there, right there. Again, they're going to go for the extra point. Hewer has made his last two. Spotted, it's booted, it's up. And we're waiting for a signal. It is no good. I think he missed it to the right. So it's a 20 point lead now for John Glenn. 42 to 22. Let's take another look at this return here. And there you see it taken at the Almost dropped it. 27 yard line. Good and cut, you'll see right number 22 here. Houghton nice picking up cut. his mocking. Yes. Real nice cut. And then just speed. Too much speed. So Matt Houghton, the five foot nine inch, 150 pound senior, has a touchdown he's going to remember for a long time. Sure is. So that touchdown with uh, nine minutes and eight seconds to go in the third quarter, Mike. Ed, you mentioned that Hewer's wearing his brother's number. Is there a reason for that? I know his brother played for him a couple of years ago and was a punter and kicker. I was talking to the equipment man while I was down on the field. He just mentioned that uh, he did change jerseys and it is his brother's number, but I didn't get a reason for it. Possibly his brother's here. Uh, I know he went to uh, one of the academy schools that maybe was Army or Navy. And well, I wish I knew because it'd probably kill me if I said one or the other and I was wrong. So I will not say which one. Willie Bush to receive this kickoff, number 22. He's on the right side of the field along with Adams in the middle. And it's a short kick on the far side of the field, taking it about the 20-yard line. And the gain is across the 30 to about the 32-yard line. So pretty good field position for the Zebras. But uh, they're down by three touchdowns. I don't think it's a panic situation, but it is going to be important for them to score pretty quickly here, Mike. Uh, they were down 14-0 uh, in the first quarter, and at the end of the first quarter, it was 16-14. So, obviously, they can put some points up on the scoreboard. And they have a very capable quarterback in uh, Lorenzo Guest, 6-foot-2-inch, 170-pounder. Plays both safety and quarterback on offense. For Wayne Memorial, this is another, another key possession here. We talked about in the first half when they were down. They've got to make something happen here. And again, the Zebras keep the ball on the ground. The gain's going to be to just about the 35-yard line, pick up of a couple on the play. That'll set up second down and eight. There you see running with the football, number 24, Reggie McCarthy, 5-foot, 10-inch, 195-pounder. Picks up about two yards on the play. And that'll bring up second down and eight. 8.15 to go in the third quarter, in case you just joined us. John Glenn leading it by a score of 42 to 22. High formation in the backfield now for quarterback Guess. He drops back to throw. The rush is on. He's going to run with it. Guess still has it. And he moves about the, just short of the 40-yard line. 
So a pickup on the play of about five, and that'll set up third down and about three to go. Well, they ran that play one other time, and it, it works for him pretty good. He goes back to pass, and uh, they know he can throw the ball, and they're calling hard for him, and it opens up in the middle because all the defensive backs are going, are backpedaling, and he takes off with it. So good play there uh, by the Zebras. Now coming out of the ball game is Marcus Adams. Here you see number seven. Big third down play here for Wayne. Third down and about two yards to go. Caught a long two. Gets back to throw. Going for the screen pass. Sideline oh. pass incomplete. Pass intended for Bernard Hicks. Hicks incomplete. And that'll bring up fourth down. Now you got nothing to lose. You trail by three touchdowns. You need a long two yards, but it looks like they're going to be sending the kicking unit out there. I say go for it in this situation because last game of the year, this is your title game, if you will, and uh, you need three touchdowns anyway. Why not go for it? But apparently they're going to kick unless they go for the fake here. Well, you know, then again, Ed, they're down three, and they are a potent offensive team. They can score, and there's still seven minutes and 12 seconds left here in the third quarter. Over and 10, he is going to punt it. Over 10 punting it. Pretty good punt. And this one hits. Uh, it's caught at about the 30-yard line. 35 to 40. Coming up the sidelines and finally knocked out of bounds. That is number eight for John Glenn, Jake Henry. Pretty good return by Jake. About 15 yards on that return. Well, was that, you know, Glenn's punting game, punt return game, has been really good all season. And tonight they're really showing their stuff here. Yeah, Great field mark, position. They all marked the ball at the 48-yard line. So John Glenn, all they really have to do here is eat away at some of that clock. They're up three touchdowns. Not real important that they score. I think what's more important is that they eat away at the clock. 7 right, 0 to go in the third quarter. I formation in the backfield for Morrison and the Rockets. On the first play, oh, okay. they give it to the first man through. The gain is across the 50 to about the 49-yard line. Pick up on the play of about four yards. Uh, Running with the football, this was Jason Fuller, six foot, 215-pound senior, Mike. Yeah, interesting because they started out that play giving the ball to Fuller. Uh, you know, the play that worked was that pitch out and uh, off tackle play for Tarek Horn. And I mean, he really had himself a great first half. Ed. Pick up on the play of four. It'll be second down and six. Morrison again out of the I formation. Drops there back is. to throw. He'll give it to the tailback. Running with the ball is Horn again. And Horn might have got back to the line of scrimmage. Maybe a half a yard at the most. And then he was stacked up by the middle of that tough Wayne defensive line. Well, obviously the Wayne uh, defense talked about that play at halftime because they made an adjustment. And they stopped him for really about no game here. Man. So that'll set up third down now. Let's call it six. I'll give the defense credit there because they did make the adjustment that they had to do. So big play now for John Glenn. Third down and six. Again, they operate out of the I formation. Morrison, the experienced quarterback, calling the signals. Morrison now will pitch out on the right side. And no gain on the play. Again, maybe about a yard at the most. And John Glenn's going to have to punt it away, Mike. Well, there's a defensive stand for Wayne now. If you're John Glenn, you might want to you might want to go with this. Hard to say, fourth and about uh, three or four, and it looks like yeah, it looks like they're going to go for it, Ed. Okay. Morrison come back out into the ball game. 5:15 to go in the third quarter, and obviously a big play here. John Glenn, if they can make it, they'll be able to take off another two or three minutes off the clock. No, Morrison's Morrison's back to punt. So they are going to be punting it. They might be trying to draw him off sides. And I think this is too much time. It's either too much time or illegal procedure. Yeah, too Delay much time. Game, too much time. It'll cost them five. And now they're definitely going to have to punt. Now you're looking at fourth down and about eight yards to go. That was interesting because they had uh, Morrison, who's not the punter at all. Uh, I think they called him. I think they were trying to draw him Yeah, I think they were. Because it would have gave him a first down because it was fourth and about four. So now we're going to see him punt the ball. Lorenzo Guest, number five, is one of the deep men. Also back there is uh, Gerald Wetmore. Adams. Gerald Adams back. Or Adams, excuse me. Here's the kick, and 
Takes a oh, John what a bounce. bounce. What a bounce. Down inside the 10, down to almost the five yard line. And nice kick. Very, very poor field position now for Wayne Memorial. Great With kick. With 15 to go here in the third period. As Jason Kitts, uh, just a fantastic punt. Well, Wayne's got a long ways to go here. 42-22 with 4.35 left in, in the, in the uh, third quarter. Well, the way the scoring has been going this, in this game, though, it's certainly not over with yet. No, it's not. So first down, 10 yards to go. Wayne operating from their own five-yard line. And Guest drops back to throw. Long pass, oh, far sideline. Oh! And it is incomplete. Wow. Yes, yes, shows a pretty good arm on that play. A pass of about 35 yards, far side of the field, incomplete. There you see the intended receiver, Gerald Adams, who had it in his hands, but Adams. couldn't hang on to it. We've seen Adams make a couple of one-hand catches tonight. That would have been fantastic. He would have been gone. And there you got a glimpse also of head coach Chuck Houghton. Yeah, he was pointing at uh, Jake Henry, but I think it was good coverage there by Henry. Let's see if we can see it again on the replay here. Watch Gerald Adams, number three. He's got it, well... Well, something happened. At any rate, it's second down point. and ten now. Gets back to throw. The rush is on. He gets, gets it rid away. of it at the last minute. And the pass complete. The gain is across the five to about the eight-yard line. So a pickup on the play of only about three. And Guess just did get that one off, Mike. I'll tell you what. It's like watching a, uh, the kids play over in the park, really, because he just made a great individual effort there. And, you know, sometimes those plays work and sometimes they don't, Ed. And that's something that he's going to learn. Yeah, that's the big disadvantage that Wayne has on this end of the field. Normally you're running the ball, but you're down three touchdowns. You have to pass it, and any little mistake here could lead to an interception and a score for John Glenn. Right, and John Glenn is, is coming at you full blast here. So third down now, and seven yards to go for the Zebras from Wayne. Guess now drops straight back to throw. The rush is on. He'll have to run with it. Gets still on his feet to the 15. Nice and he's going to be close to a first down. Yeah, he's got it. He's got the first down. So I'm sure that wasn't a design play, but the rush was really put on by the center of that uh, defensive line for John Glenn. Guess had no choice but to run it. Smart play by the quarterback getting the first down. You know, Ed, I, I almost wonder, we've seen that play before. I think it's a it's a set play because he goes back, and I think they block to the outside to open that up in the center, and he takes, it, takes full advantage of it. And you know what? I remember that play from last year. Uh, I think it was Tim Mate was the quarterback, and he used that to uh, Wayne's advantage quite a bit last year against Glenn. Bernard Hicks put out wide to the left-hand side. First down, 10 yards to go from the Wayne 17-yard line. Guess drops back to throw again. Pretty good protection this time. Fires a pass, far side of the field, Whoa. incomplete. The pass intended again for Gerald Adams at the 45-yard line. A little bumping on that one, but... Uh, I think that's what uh, Coach Houghton was yelling about. He was looking for the interference. Let's see if we can see that on the isolated replay. Gerald Adams, number three, the intended receiver at about the 45-yard line. There you see Adams. And there was a little contact there, but it looked like Adams bumped into the defender. Yeah, hard, hard one to call. Probably a good no call, really. So it's second down, 10 yards to go now for the Zebras from their own 17-yard line. Guess now taking a lot of time, calling the signals. Drops back to throw. He'll run with it again, and he's going to go nowhere this nice time. Nice tackle. Looked like he was getting ready to unload that ball as he was going down. A smart decision not throwing it. He'll take the loss well, and Jeremy, bring up third down. Jeremy Cosby came in from the linebacking position, and he did what you're supposed to do. He wrapped him up, and he didn't let him do anything with that ball. Nice defensive effort there. It looks like about a loss of eight yards for guests on the play. Nice play by Cosby. Yeah, they're marking the ball at the 10-yard line, so that'll set up third down now and about 17 yards to go. And this time, Gerald Adams splits out to the left-hand side. I formation in the backfield for quarterback Guess. Big play here for the Zebras. It's a rush. Guess back to throw. He's going to run again. Guess is tackled at the 13-yard line. Pick up of only a couple of yards, and the Zebras are going to have to punt it away. Well, that was Cosby again. You wonder if Cosby's lone roll out there is to keep his eye on the quarterback. Wherever he goes, Cosby goes. 
Yeah. And that's a good way to do it. A lot of times you got a good individual performer back there. You pick a defensive man to keep an eye on him. Cosby stayed at home and made the tackle that time. Jake Henry, the deep man for John Glenn to receive this punt. He is standing at the Wayne 40-yard line. So you can see that John Glenn should get excellent position. A flag down on the play. Henry will receive the punt way back near midfield, and he'll just go down right there. There is a flag down on the play. We'll have to wait and see what the call is. Well, I think Glenn was coming. I think they wanted to block that punt, and they may have been offsides. Do you see the officials? The illegal procedure, the no, call. No, Wayne and was not set. I would think you have to make him punt it over here because that was a pretty good punt, and Henry fielded that ball way back near the 50-yard line. See the Glenn coaches. They declined. Right away they declined. I'm I guess they want the ball. Yeah. That. I mean that was a that was that was a good punt though. That punt was about uh, a 40-yard punt all that the way was. back to midfield. But uh, I guess the thinking here being, why make the risk of them kicking it again? Then you might fumble the ball. Sure. And you got good field position. Even and you though a three it, it was lead, yeah, too. it was a good kick, but they still end up having uh, good field position. Well, I guess that's why I'm up here in the booth. But I say maybe <laughs> kick it again. At any rate, it's first down, 10 yards to go for. John Glenn, we're down to a minute 32 to go in the third quarter. Big three touchdown lead for John Glenn. And Horton running with a football. He's inside the 45, down to about the 44-yard line. Pick up on the play of about four yards. Checking in there defensively is number 74, Mike Kennedy, a six foot two inch, 225 pound defensive tackle for Wayne Memorial. And Ed, we talked about this a little bit. We're uh, more than happy to have uh, Wayne High out here tonight doing the game at Wayne High. We'd like to thank all the people from Wayne High for their hospitality. We got some coffee in the first half. And a lot of these kids from Wayne High do, do live in Westland, so they're going to see this game. This is their championship game right here. Sure this is, is for the bragging rights of the Wayne Westland area, no question about that. So it's second down now and about six to go for John Glenn. Again, they keep the ball on the ground. They give it to the first man through, pick up of only about two yards on the play. There you see at the bottom of the pile, that's number 31, Mike Kidder, 5 foot 8 inch, 165 pound <laughs> junior running with the football. A couple of new bodies in there for uh, John Glenn. Number 19, Jason Duffield lining up at wide receiver. So it's going to be third down and two yards to go now for the Rockets. High formation in the backfield again for Morrison. Big play here. If John Glenn can get the first down, they'll be able to eat some more time off that clock. They give it to the tailback Horn, and Horn is going to be short of the first down. He's going to be close, Mike. It looks like he's going to be about a half a yard short at about the 41-yard line. And that is the end of the third quarter with our score. John Glenn, 42, and Wayne Memorial, 22. We'll be right back. So through the end of three quarters, Mike, our score 42 to 22, and a pretty good third quarter for John Glenn. Yeah, it really was. Uh, you know, very good punt return by Matt Houghton, which I'm sure he's thrilled uh, doing that against his father's team. Uh, you know, we didn't see a whole lot of scoring, but it was a it was a pretty even fought ball game, really, besides that punt return. And uh, I look for the kids to come out and just play this fourth quarter and. Uh, <laughs> You know, not get into any skirmishes or anything because uh, these these kids all know each other and they're very intense out there. No, it's so. fourth down and two yards to go as they marked uh, Horn's forward progress only to about the 41-yard line. And John Glenn, as you can see, is going for it on fourth down. Triple backs in the backfield and they give the ball to number 22. This is uh, Houghton. And Houghton looks like he's got enough for the first down. Well, it was just a little power football there, just off tackle to the right side there. Again, the offensive line for Glenn has really been doing a good job tonight. And uh, John Glenn, I thought, has been doing a good job of mixing up their plays. And uh, Horn has gotten a lot of action running with the football, but they're, they've got several backs that are running with the ball. Yeah, they do tonight, uh, which they didn't really use that much against Harrison. And we, we have not found out. Uh, why Besco is not playing, but uh, there's obviously got to be a reason. From the 38-yard line, I formation in the backfield for Morrison. He fires a pass on the far side, and the pass is caught. I believe that's Henry on the reception. 
Gain to about the 35-yard line. Pick up of three on the play. So that'll set up, set up second down and seven. There you see uh, quarterback Morrison talking to head coach Gor uh, Jordan for the next play. What? And I'm a little bit surprised that they're throwing the ball in the fourth quarter with a three-touchdown lead. But, again, you've got to try to keep your opposition off guard, too. That's right. And that, that's a good safe throw. It's a quick look to the right side. And uh, that's a safe throw, uh, Ed. And, uh, you know, I don't blame them for doing that. they got to mix it up a little bit. So it's second down now and six yards to go. Morrison will pitch it out. Again, this is to Houghton. And Houghton picks up about three yards on the play. He'll be short of the first down, and that'll bring up third down. And there you see an injured player on the sideline for the Zebras. Looks like uh, number six, Corey McClellan, six foot one inch, 205 pound pounder that they're working on on the sideline. And he's their inside linebacker, so that's a key injury for Wayne High here. They want to try to get back in this ball game. They've got to get him in the ball game. So that'll bring up third down now. The ball resting at the 31-yard line, and the Rockets need about four on this play. Third down, a long three, short four. High formation in the backfield for Morrison. Again, the Rockets just trying to eat away at the clock with a big three-touchdown lead. And Morrison will give it to Houghton. And he's going to be real close. And with second effort, yeah, he's got it. He's got the first down. Again, power football. Just give it to the tailback and just run behind that big line. Gain is inside the 25 down to about the 23-yard line. So the Rockets continue to get the first down. They continue to eat away at the clock. 10-24 to play here in the fourth period. And they lead by a score of 42-22. to You know, Ed, all the fans probably love the, the flash and everything else that we've seen tonight. But if I'm John Glenn coach, this is probably the best drive that I've seen all night because they're controlling the ball. They're running behind that big offensive line. They're controlling everything right now. This time Morrison's going to throw it, but he's sacked. And a loss on the play of about 10 yards as the Zebras uh, get a big sack there. And again, a little bit surprising that uh, Morrison and the Rockets are throwing in this situation. But Wayne was right on top of the play there getting the quarterback sack. Yeah, good, good defensive call there because they blitzed. They had about seven guys coming in there. And uh, Morrison really had no time to do anything. He, he came back and uh, they were all there. So It looks like McClellan's going to be OK uh, talking over there to the, uh, to the trainer. It looks like uh, he may see some more action in this game. So, John Glenn now, after being sacked on first down, have second down and long. Out with the ball, and he'll pick up about three yards on the left side, and that's it. Gain to about the 30-yard line, and that's going to set up third down now in about 16. So not much running room that time for Hout. You see big number 50, John Lloyd, 5 foot 10 inch, 175 pounder for the Zebras. And you never know this team was down by 20 points right now, Mike. They're still no. pretty fired up. Well, again, we elaborated uh, about this being the neighborhood game. It's the Michigan, Michigan State type game. And you know, they're going to fight till the end. You know that. Triple wide receivers now for John Glenn on third down and 16. We checked that double wide out as the other player was just coming out of the game. Morrison back to throw. Pretty good protection. Nice Pass on the throw. far side is caught. But the gain on the play is only going to be for three or four yards. They'll be well short of the first down. And now again, it's decision time for John Glenn right here. And we'll see if uh, Chuck Gordon elects to go for it on fourth down here. It would be an awful long field goal, Mike, in this weather. I would think that they would just go for it here on fourth down. What do you think? Yeah, I think they're going to go for it. And I don't see anybody coming out, any kickers coming out, and Morrison still in the ball game. So, ah. timeout. So it's fourth down and long now for John Glenn. They call timeout. They're going to talk <laughs> about it. And uh, I would think if they can get the first down here, Mike, that would just about seal the victory. Yeah, I think so. Matt's Catering for all your cater catering needs. 278-6400 is their phone number. And uh, we want to thank them once again for sponsoring our football season here on Continental 11. I know it's been pretty exciting for us covering the games, Mike, and uh, hopefully 
Uh, John Glenn can go on and do well in the playoffs, and it's been really a real exciting year. Yes, it has, Ed, and uh, we learned from the truck that we are going to cover next week's ball game that John Glenn has, and uh, we'll have to read the paper tomorrow to see who they're going to play, but it will be at John Glenn, we understand, and Continental Cable 11 will be there. So. Well, for those of you wondering why we got a chance here, Mike, we'll just let everyone know that as of right now, John Glenn is first in the region. The top four schools go to the playoffs. Uh, they're, they're in first place. Brighton is second. Howell is third. Belleville from the Mega Conference is fourth. And Adrian is close behind fifth at 6 and 2 coming into this week's action. So it looks like right now, if John Glenn could go on to win this game, that it may be either Belleville or Adrian as their first opponent. Fourth down for John Glenn. They're going for it here. They're up by three touchdowns, and, and they run with the ball on the left side, and they're going to come up short. Running with the football again was number 22, Matt Houghton. Comes up a little bit short, but that play really doesn't hurt John Glenn. No, they, you know, they couldn't really punt the ball because, the, you know, you'd have to really pooch it, and who knows if they could do that. Uh, they're too far for a field goal, so that's a, that's a good play. Good safe call. So Wayne Memorial will take over now, and if they're, they've got any chance in this game at all, they're going to need a real fast score. They have the ball way back inside the 20-yard line at the 17. And we certainly expect uh, quarterback Guest to be putting it up in the air here. And expect John Glenn to be coming after him. High formation in the backfield for Guest from the 17-yard line. No, they run with the football. Straight up the middle, gain on the play of about two. So while everybody in the stadium just about was expecting pass, they decided to keep the ball on the ground. There you see running with the football, number 24, Reggie McCarthy, picking up about two on the play. It'll be second down and about eight. Seven minutes to go here in the fourth period. 42 to 22, John Glenn out in front. Split out to the far left-hand side, Gerald Adams, number three. Eye formation in the backfield for Guess. Now he drops straight back to throw. The rush is on, on the blitz. And he gets, oh, away. he gets away. Gets still on his feet. He's at the 20, 20 oh, look out! Guess on oh, the sideline. And he's finally Jeez. knocked out of bounds at the 45-yard line. And a great play oh, by Guess. Finally knocked out of bounds by Jake Henry. Wow. He almost went all the way on that play, Mike. Well, I'll tell you what. I, I'm just... Obviously, I am speechless because this kid is really something. Now, watch the, quarter, the uh, quarterback blitz coming from the far side of the field. I don't know how Guest seen him or well, got I away. Well, I thought for sure he was going to be down, and then he just turns it into a great individual oh, you play. You see the pursuit coming down from right the far here, side. But he just misses him. Yep. Nice cut. Look at that cut. Bro breaks a tackle, and Henry finally knocks him out of bounds right here. Long pass is incomplete. Tell you what, that's a great play by Jay Henry because he got pushed from behind on that play. And they didn't make the call, but he was still able to get up there, almost intercept it. So Henry uh, making two plays back-to-back -back for the Rockets as he stopped quarterback Guess on the previous play. Second down now and 10 yards to go for Wayne Memorial. Uh, I think clock running down, though, Mike, 629 left. Yeah, I think Jake Henry's going to be happy when this game's over with. One, his team's going to win, and two, they're going to quit throwing that ball his way. He's played a nice game over there. High right, formation for Guess. He drops straight back to throw, fires the pass near side, and it's incomplete. The pass intended for number 11, Jason Overton. Do you see Overton, number 11? Well, it's pretty close to being a reception and a fumble. But uh, they ruled it an incomplete. Overton had his hands on the ball, but just couldn't quite hang on. So that'll bring up third down. There you see our score, 42 to 22. And we're down to just eight minutes and 22 seconds to go here in this contest. Come on, guys, let's go. And this time, number three, Gerald Adams splits out to the far left side. High formation in the backfield for the Zebras. Big third down play. The rush is on again. Guess better get rid of it. He does. And it's incomplete. The pass was caught by number 24, Reggie McCarthy. But he clearly got both feet out of bounds. So it goes incomplete. And the Zebras, I would think, have to go for it now. They have no choice. Oh, definitely. 
Again, nice was, catch uh, by McCarthy, but he was just out of bounds. Yeah, Brian Vesco came over from the right end spot, put a lot of pressure on Guest, and this time he couldn't get out of it. So this is pretty much the ball game right here. If Wayne has any hope at all in this game, they have to complete this pass for a first down. Uh, watch for that quarterback draw, too, because you know Glenn's coming. Guest drops back to throw. The rush is on. He fires a pass. Sidelines, and it is incomplete. Nice defensive play. Could be possibly. This, we got a flag on the play. And, could and again, that's Henry on the defensive play, Mike. Well, I, knocking that ball. Yeah, it was. It was a nice play. I think possibly this is on Wayne because I don't think they had enough guys on the uh, The illegal the procedure line. is a call against Wayne. It's, it's declined. And watch Henry right here knocking that ball away, number eight. That pass intended for Gerald Adams. The penalty, as I mentioned, is declined, and John Glenn takes over. That's and a nice it's play just by a matter Henry. of time. So the Rockets will finish the regular season at 8-1. Their only loss on the year to Harrison, and of course they beat Harrison the first game of the year. So they have to feel pretty good right now about their regular season, Mike. They're yes, going they do. The and, and, you know, it's a big victory for them. Not only are they playing against their crosstown rival, but they've come off a, a real tough loss, and this is a big moral victory for them going into the playoffs. And again, the Rockets just keep the ball on the ground, pick up on the play of about five yards, so that'll bring up second down and five. For those of you who might be wondering why are they playing Harrison twice, the first game was a scheduled crossover game in the Western Lakes. The reason that they played them last week is Harrison was the winner of their division and John Glenn the winner of their division in the Western Lakes, so the top two teams always play. It was just a coincidence that the first game, the crossover game, the two teams met. I formation in the backfield for the Rockets. Come on, it's second down, six yards to go for quarterback Morris Morrison. And they give it to the tailback, gain on the play of only about two. And there you see running with the ball is Horn, the 5-foot, 11-inch, 180-pound senior who's seen plenty of action in the first half. Yes, he did. Picks up only about two yards on this play. And that'll bring up third down. Now you got to start thinking if you're Chuck Gordon about you don't want to have any of your key players hurt in this game for the playoffs, and I would think that uh, we're going to start seeing some wholesale changes. Yeah, I, I, I see a couple of substitutes out there, and uh, it's a good move by Coach Gordon. You don't, like you said, you don't want to get any of the big guns hurt before you go into the state playoffs. Less than five minutes left, third down and four. Morrison will pass it far side of the field. The ball is juggled but caught, and a, and a gain of the first down and more as the gain is all the way down to the 35-yard line for a first down. Jeff Wagner off the and there's uh, Derek Besco, and we have not seen too much of him at all tonight, offensively. Watch Besco juggle the ball right here, and if he manages to hang on to it, there's a missed tackle by number three, Gerald Adams, allowing Besco to get the first down, Mike. Adams should have had him there. Yes, he should, and that was a nice pass by Morrison. He's had kind of a tough uh, tough two weeks there, but he's really come back strong here in the third and fourth quarter, making some nice crisp passes. They spot the ball at the 38-yard line, first down and 10 for the Rockets. Morrison out of the I formation. And again, he'll give it to the tailback, Horn, and again on the play of about four yards. Gain down to the 35-yard line. Checking in there defensively, number 73 now for Wayne. Number 13, the number 73 on my roster. At any rate, the gain on the last play about four yards. Here you see number 22 getting some uh, attention on the sidelines. Willie Bush getting his hand wrapped. And there you see some happy cheerleaders. They're not attired like they usually are. I wonder why. Uh, I don't know, but uh, <laughs> could be that uh, severe chill we have in the air tonight. So this will set up third down and five yards to go now for John Glenn. Three minutes, 56 seconds to go in period number four. And running with the football here, this is, this is Houghton, I believe. No, it's uh, Jason Kitts. Or Kitts. Kitts in the ball game, and he picks up enough to get the first down. So everyone getting a little hand at the action here. There you see number 13, Jason Kitts, 5 foot 10 inch, 150 pound senior. A nice run by Kitts. You see Gordon is, uh, Coach Gordon is 
getting quite a few substitutes in here. And we've also got a quarterback change in there, Mike, as John Porter, five foot six inch, 140 pound senior, getting some playing action. So it's Porter, the quarterback, uh, number 10. Trevor Davy, number 11. Trevor Davy, okay. Yeah, Trevor Davy, sophomore. And gain on the play is back to the line of scrimmage, and that's it. Running with the football again, Jason Kitts. And Kitts, no gain on the play. So getting some valuable experience is Trevor Davy, just a sophomore, and uh, who knows, he may be the starting quarterback next year. Well, you know, a sophomore up on the varsity as a quarterback, he obviously is second-string quarterback, so. Yeah, let's see, that's a blue balloon, so it must have been a Wayne <laughs> fan that let that one go. I think so. Surprised it hasn't burst, it's so cold out here. Second down, 10 yards to go for John Glenn, just trying to run the clock out. They're way out in front, 42 to 22, capping off a fine season. And again, it's Kitts, and Kitts might have lost about a half a yard on the play, and he's wrapped up. So Kitts with nowhere to go on that play, Mike, and that'll bring up third down. Third down, 10 yards to go. What a first half, and it's 6 nothing in the second half. You know, they've only scored one touchdown on the Matt Houghton return. So it's been a defensive struggle, really, in the second half. Davey calling signals out of the eye formation. Third down play. And they give it to the tailback. And a loss on the play of about five. And that'll bring up fourth down. Nice defensive coverage here by Wayne Memorial. It was Rob Miller running with the football, or at least trying to run with it. Yeah, he, it, he gained didn't about, really have a uh, chance. He just got the ball, and he was being swarmed by the defensive line of Wayne. It looked almost like a broken play, but, you, you know, you never know. Sometimes the defensive team guesses right, and they're right there to make that play. Loss on the play of seven yards, so it's fourth down, 17 yards to go. The key thing now, though, is the fact there's only a minute and 10 seconds to go here in the fourth period. Again, Glenn will go for it on fourth down, just trying to run that clock down as much as they can. And again, they give it to the tailback. Rod Miller running with the football, and he'll pick up a couple. And Wayne Morio will get the ball on downs. It really makes a little difference now as we're down to just 54 seconds left. We see big number 50, John Lloyd, 5 foot 10 inch, 175 pounder. And one last opportunity for the Zebras to get on the scoreboard here in the fourth period. Well, and it's been a good ball game. It's an exciting first half and uh, really a, a pretty even second half if you really look at the score. Uh, so if you're Wayne, you got to be happy. If you're Glenn, you know, you're up 42 to 22. So you got to be real happy with that. And it's, again, it's going to push him into the playoffs. And uh, I think Wayne has to feel pretty good about scoring 22 points against, against this uh, Rocket team. Too. Uh, that's, the, that's the most points that Glenn's given up this year. So... So first down, 10 yards to go now for the Zebras. Down to 32 seconds on the clock. And now dropping back to throw. Here's a long pass, and this one is incomplete. The pass intended for Gerald Adams. He had it. He hit him right in the... In and out of his hands. I guess he's got to make those one-hand catches a little easier. Well, it looked like he, had, he was being triple teamed back there. And there you see head coach uh, Chuck Houghton. Who couldn't have been too pleased to uh, take another look at it and watch the defensive coverage by the Rockets here. You'll see three players back defending on this play. Well, there's two of them anyway. And he could have had that. So it's second down, 10 yards to go, 23 seconds on the clock. 23 seconds left in the season for the Zebras. So quarterback guess will put it up in the air again. I formation in the backfield. Taking a long time, and we've got a whistle. I think he took too much time. Got a flag on the play. The pass is caught, but I believe it's going to be delay a game, Mike. I think he took too much time. Yeah, and he, he did not complete that pass. I guess it must have slipped out of his hands there. So it'll either be third down and 10, or if uh, John Glenn takes the penalty, 
It is, uh, no, they call it a motion penalty against uh, Wayne. Yeah, procedure, so. Could have been, you know, they've been lining up every once in a while. They don't have enough men on the line, Wayne Memorial. Well, there's some happy fans on the far side of the field. I think they're a little bit cold, but uh, they're pretty happy with the results right now. And there you see kind of a dejected look on one of the players on the Wayne side of the field. That is uh, Corey, Corey McClellan, McClellan yeah. number six. Talking with uh, number 71, Dale Griffin. So we're down to 18 seconds on the clock. This could be the last play of the game. Gets back to throw. The rush is on. Down he goes. Loss on the play of about five. Tony Cruz comes in. Defensive tackle. Good play by Cruz. And that is going to be the last play of the ball game. So the Rockets cap off their season with a victory. They're going to go to the Michigan High School Athletic Association playoffs. They end their season at 8-1, and one, and they finish it up in nice fashion, Mike. Uh, yes, they did, Ed. And, you know, I'll tell you what, I'm just happy to get out of here with my toes still intact and everything else because this was a cold night, and John Glenn came out hot. Wayne Memorial came out hot, and uh, it was a good first half. And a hard fought second half, and if you're John Glenn, you got to be happy going into the playoffs with the victory, 42 to 22 over the crosstown rival Wayne Memorial Zebras. Okay, so for Mike and for Keith and for our entire crew here at Wayne Memorial High School, this is Ed Canto saying, join us next week for the playoffs. Again, you see our final score: John Glenn winning. They end the season at eight and one, 42 to 22 over Wayne, who ends their season at four and five. Good night from Wayne Memorial.